Welcome into the Cam and Strick podcast, episode number 236, presented by Hair Club for men and women around the world, Cam. God, I felt like shit this morning. Well, that's par for the course. I did. And I know you weren't parring on the course. Listen, your golf game, my people are coming at me left and right. They're like, oh my God, this guy is so embarrassed. If you don't get this guy golf lessons, yeah. then it's going to be, he's not going to have anyone to golf yeah, with anymore. Yeah. At, the, at the racket club? Yeah, well. They, they, they're... They find tabs me. on me they, at the fucking racket club. They find I me. I bet they are. I bet they are. <laughs> they ain't doing shit. They find me. They ain't doing shit. What'd you do all weekend? Like why I you golfed <laughs> all weekend, yeah. and I ate sushi. Oh, I just eat like, myself into an oblivion. That looked like grocery store sushi. It was sushi AI, so it's not the expensive stuff. It's like a oh sushi AI. Sushi, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Sushi AI. I see them all over the place. Yeah, it's a chain sushi place, okay. and they popped up in Eureka. So Kate and I took the jeep, mm-hmm. fucking went. We had a uh, had a couple cocktails at the place. Said hey, some people, and I ordered a fucking huge party tray. To take home, and we watch hockey all night, mm-hmm. and it, it was windy Did out. Did you it finish beautiful. it all in one day? No, man, I couldn't do no? it. Oh, I, I and so I, I ate as much. I was getting stoned too. I ate as much as possible, and the next morning I wake up. I'm like, oh God, oh help me! And I walk into the kitchen and I smell it mm-hmm. after eating a shit ton of it, like mm-hmm. too much, and I basically puked. In the- oh, gross! No. Do you think in Japan that they eat a lot of sushi? Like that's yes. like their go to. What? Like they're just eating it nonstop? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Are question. they eating sushi? That's a stupid all question. the time. It's a stupid question. Are they like loading themselves down with look sushi? At the, look at the, look at the Asians, man. They're very healthy. They are. They live forever. They're the smartest people on the planet. How do the sumo wrestlers get so big? You they eat a ton. They're dedicated to eat a ton. Mm-hmm. You know, but normal people in Asia, like they're just disciplined. They're family oriented. They fucking they don't eat bullshit. They're, they just, they don't, they're disciplined people, man. Mm-hmm. And they eat healthy shit all the time. They eat sushi, healthy, fresh from the goddamn water, and they don't put weight on. Yeah, I'm thinking well, about... when I eat it, I'm a fucking slob. Well, I'm thinking about going to uh, Hong Kong. Why? I hear it's an amazing place. Oh, God, yeah, it is. I hear they're so nice. The, the food are, is amazing. The people are damn right. Um... It's it's crowded, but not overly crowded. It's unbelievably <laughs> crowded. Nah, I talk Are to you people, kidding me? I talk to people who've been Shanghai there. Shanghai and Hong Kong. It's not crowded. It's the most populated fucking cities in the world. But the I, hell you I hear it's about? an amazing vacation. And then I you miss, can hop over to uh, to Thailand. Very very easy. I wouldn't touch either one of those. Oh, I right go now. to Thailand. I wouldn't touch. And I go to Hong Kong too. In fact, I'm thinking about. I'm looking at flights right now. I wouldn't actually. go to fucking China right now. I just wouldn't. I'm not gonna lie to you. I wouldn't go to China. Is Hong Kong China? Kind of. It is, and it's not. Uh, it, is, is Washington, it, D.C., United States? It's not China. I know what the fuck it is. Yeah, it's not China. You're in See, China. Let me explain. In Hong Kong, homeboy. No. And if they shut that city down because of another fucking COVID thing, like, you're going to be stuck there. It's in, all good. In I'm Hong saying. Kong, are they Chinese? Yes. Is that is that what they are? They're from th- listen. It's a, it's a little separate thing. I can't explain the whole thing, but it, but you're trying to put me on the spot like an asshole. I don't know about enough about fucking China. I just know that we might have World War Three with them in the next oh, five to ten. years. That would not be good. But for you to like, I like how Andy's like. Ooh, somebody said China the other day. I want to go to China. No, 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 no. You don't. Hong Kong. Okay. And then and then Thailand. You hop over to Thailand from Hong Kong. Thailand's got some amazing resorts that you can stay at. Oh hell yeah! Uh, you can get into the city, and obviously you can get suits for like less than a hundred bucks. I think Just don't uh, custom don't suits. Don't fucking do any coke or any fucking smoke any weed there, boy. In 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 Thailand. In Thailand, they'll fuck you over. No, so it's not Singapore, dude. They will fuck you over so goddamn bad your head will spin. Now you, if you, you, you get you're caught, thinking Singapore, dude. You get caught in Thailand with drugs, they'll fuck you up, boy. It ain't the United States. You'll get fucked up. Just remember that. I don't got to worry about that. You can go bang, you can go bang a little lady boy if you want. But you touch Who? drugs, lady boys out there all the time. But if you touch drugs. What's a lady boy? What do you think? That's, that's, that's like a lady and a boy at the same time. What do you mean lady boy? <laughs> well, maybe when you're a little younger. And uh, you went to Thailand. You thought you saw this cute little girl that wants to blow uh, you. But it, and she's got a wee-wee, too. It, okay. She's got a wee-wee, too. No big deal. No okay. big deal. Just remember that they some of them have it. wee-wees. They hide it. But I wouldn't do drugs there, man. Don't no, fucking no, put don't, you in a don't nasty... Mess, don't mess around with that. You can't there, dude. Dude, you want to party? Come to the United States, man. You want to get drugs? Come to the United States. You want to fucking get down with it? 
the United States, you'll be okay for the most part. But you go to some of those little fucking Eastern Asian or uh, uh, Southeast Asia, whatever it is, like, they'll get you. Dude. That's why you tell people to come to the U.S.? No, it's You're not like, free. come see the national parks. Yeah, there's awesome parks Come see here. the beautiful cities. <clears throat> yeah, no doubt. And you could, and, and, and it's somewhat lenient if you get down with it. But there, I'm just telling you, man. Fucking lady boys out the wazoo. They're like built like you. I know. You <laughs> think they're boys. abroad. I had not, not I had not heard of the lady boys. I know. <laughs> just be careful you with that. You see those all over the place, actually. Lady boys? Vegas. Yeah, they'll be in Vegas, New too. New Orleans. For sure. for sure, man. It was a beautiful weekend here in Missouri, man. Beautiful weekend. Fucking 65, a little windy. Like, it's nice, dude. Too windy, and my uh, my 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 eyes are itching. My allergies well, have never been worse. Have you seen what happened to my eye? Like, I was telling you about Chaz. It looks like you have liver failure. Maybe it was on the right. Oh, don't does, say that. Because man. when your eyes get this brownish hue to them, my dad had it. Are they my brown? Mom, your left like eye is brown. It's no, not red. No, it's got blood like a No, it's a little vessel. brown. So when your eyes are like that brownish tint to them, man, there's something wrong. Oh, yeah, internally. don't say that I'm to me. I'm just saying, that's not an allergenic No, I think eye. it might be. But my allergies are Oh, Dr. Cam, you act like you know, like, uh, oh, know you, look, you look at the shade of my eye My mom eye died color. of fucking liver failure. I know what the fuck happened to her. You're my dad it. almost died of liver failure, and I know what the fuck. You think I'm having liver failure? No, but it kind of looks like it. You I mean, because you're enough. making me think I have. You don't drink enough. Is that the only it. way to get liver failure? I, I, it's a big, it's a, I don't know. It's the only way. I mean, any, I think anything can break down in your body, any mm. organ. I've been drinking a lot of seltzers. You're dude. healthy as shit, Andy. You are. Okay. So don't worry about it. I'm just telling you when you see somebody, your mom and dad have that weird fucking tent in their eye. You gotta, you gotta get them checked out. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Okay. Well, That's you, all. you might want to get me checked out. If you can bring you a doctor get me in checked here. Out, Andy. <laughs> I'm the disaster. Well, not you. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot okay. of things you that are eat, going on you around plant based right shit every day. You don't drink much. You're just. You're looking up stats and stuff like that. <laughs> stats. You don't abuse your body. You know. What's an interesting stat right now? There's no interesting <laughs> stats. I, I'll give you a stat. Don't win don't win the president's trophy. Don't only don't lose two game, games or ten games a year. And, you know, expect not to get smacked around by a team that shouldn't beat you. Like mm-hmm. I just feel like they just they had it to Boston Brewers had it too easy. You won too many games. You're just, like, kind of flying high. You got the record. And all of a sudden, you just get fucking smacked, dude. You had it. You had them. And you got smacked. And Matthew Kachuk came to fucking play, dude. Hey, you want to know what happened? He came to play. Before, real quick, because my eye is getting back to that, I went to school with a kid named Chaz who had a fake eye. He would take it out of his eye socket, and he would roll it down the hallway at school. He'd put it on his desk. I mean, he would take his eye out of his socket. So, I mean, a fake eye, just completely take it out and just, he like put it on your lap, dude. It was fucking terrible. Absolutely terrible. Badass story. Yeah, you ever heard of Chaz? Is, Chaz, mm-hmm. Por- Ch- Chaz fucking Oregon. Mm-hmm. And I've never, I, I hung out with a couple of Chazes when I grew up and I had to get the fuck away from them. You got to watch out for a Chaz. My dad team. had to tell me, hey, you're hanging out with dipshits. Stop it. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And I stopped hanging out. They, hang went, they didn't want pussy. All they want to do is fucking get fucked up on that's, everything. That's, that's what Chaz wanted. Yeah, and I yeah. was like 13, 14, 15 ish, and I'm my dad playing AAA. And my dad's like, "Get the fuck away from Chaz." Mm-hmm. The kid that I went to high school with named Chaz, he looked like he was like 30 years old already, like yeah. in high well, school. He probably was. And he would take his eye out of his socket and just roll it down the hallway. Yeah. I mean, like, people are screaming, like running from this eye. I think it was a stick incident, like not hockey stick, but like from a stick. Maybe, man. Felt yeah. ba- I feel bad yeah. for the guy. I know yeah. I know you think that story's cool, but I, you're chirping the kid, but I feel bad for him. There's He's no, got one fucking eye. He would, listen, I, I will say this. If he, if he had two eyes, he would have been in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Just if you were six if foot he, eight. If he had two eyes. If you were six foot eight and athletic, you yeah. would too. Probably a wrestling champion too. He'd be all kinds of things, Andy. Mm. Andy talks about his athletic career more than anybody I know. It's just the way it goes in, in radio and I'm TV. I'm talking about Chaz's. So just, just like, I, I just, it's just nonstop. You know? <laughs> what the people <laughs> on radio and TV, people radio and TV talk about their they career. They are the best of the best. I've never met more cocky people in my life. I played in fucking NHL locker rooms. I've heard stories from guys. I've seen guys making 10 million bucks. They don't even talk about themselves like the radio and TV people do. It's crazy. Is that right? God, yeah. It's so odd. What about your high school? What you do? What? Oh, you did this in lacrosse? Cool. Mm. I, oh, I have to hear the story again? Cool. You know. 
It's like uh, you, you interview people. You that's ever heard you of do. a uh, Tibetan Mastiff? Yeah, they're huge dogs. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting one. Fuck, man. You don't need one of those, dude. You don't even feed your dog now. Those things are hardcore. You That thing would knock around shit in your house like you can't believe. You don't even know what it is. You don't even have is. the fucking yard for it. They're expensive as hell. They're huge. They'll climb trees up. They'll mm-hmm. do shit. You throw a fucking thing up. They'll climb a tree, jump, grab it, come down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. They're unbelievably athletic. They're hardcore. And they're not good around kids. And they're very smart. They're very smart, but they're yes. fucking little cranky. They're Tibetan. Yeah, I know. So they have all different types of mastiffs. This is a Tibetan mastiff, which a Tibetan mastiff, when it's by itself, it could fight off an entire wolf pack. Yeah, I know. They're tougher than shit. Mm-hmm. Yep, you're damn right they will. Mm-hmm. You don't have wolves by your house. You don't have coyotes by your house. You don't have a goddamn thing by your house. We got coyotes. Why the fuck would you need a mastiff? You got children running around your house. You already got a dog named Blay that you don't feed. Now you're going to get a mastiff. And it's going to wreck your whole house. You're going to be late for podcasts. It's going to cost me my fucking time because you can't juggle what you got now. And now you're going to get another dog. Don't do it. I'm thinking about bringing it, bringing it with me in here, no. actually. No, okay. you're not. No, you're not getting another dog. You can't juggle what you have. Well, Blay, you can't juggle what you have. Blay, listen, Blay, uh, his allergies are starting to uh, get rid of him. recover a little get, bit. Oh, get rid well, of him. No, he's getting better. He's getting get rid better. of him. Poor thing. He's getting better. My God. He had to be shaven down because of a uh, condition that he had. You know, I read uh, cats are actually allergic to people. A lot of cats are allergic to people. Not mine. Well, I think it might be. My little precious baby follows me everywhere I go. Little you should boo, look boo. into that. You little know that? Boo, boo. She's my baby little girl. I love her so much. Mm. Precious little kitten. So listen, this past weekend, I introduced myself to roller hockey really for the first time. Like with my kid, he played in his first roller hockey tournament. And I played a little role. Like I played a ton of roller hockey when I was oh, a kid, no. but it I wasn't like it. organized. You know, now it's like a, it's like a real sport, like roller hockey. It was a real sport when I grew up. Yeah, playing. you're a little bit after me, though. Like when I when well, I got you, you when I got the way. when I got deep in high school, we started playing some like roller hockey tournaments at Perry Turnbull's old spot and whatever. Right, yeah, I love Perry but, Turnbull. Give you a little shout out. But and Travis Turnbull now it's like retired. all out like tournaments. You know, they hand out like the MVP. We lost in the championship game. Was Not it? you. Tied it. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah tied. Yeah. Not you. Yeah. You didn't play anything. <laughs> you couldn't keep up in that fucking league with Ty. With six year olds. Andy sent me a video the other day of Ty, his little boy who I love to death. What Cutest. video? What do you mean, what video? And Ty's like dangling, dudes. And he's like 10 and 2 in it. And he's shooting. And I go, he's fucking better than you. He's be- he's he's better than you, Andy. And he's like, well, he's not yet. No, 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 no. <laughs> he is. In every way possible. He picked up a pass on his backhand. And it didn't explode in your stick drop like you did. No, like he's on it, dude. And he looks good doing it, man. He's a cute kid. He's got the hair flowing out. Like, I want him just to be, I want him to fucking succeed so bad, dude. I truly do. I truly, truly got a big birthday coming I am up. Really I highly rec- I highly suggest you get him something for his birthday. No, don't I, be cheap. I'm not gonna dude. get. No, I'm not. Nah, gonna, don't be cheap. If you want me to call him, I'll do it. But I'm not gonna get him. a What gift. are you gonna get him? You think? I'm not gonna give him anything. What dude. do you mean? I barely gave Kate anything. I, that's true. Actually, I'm like, I just don't buy gifts. Yeah, don't I, don't, I, don't do be like, like drawing him a picture. No, Kate will probably get her get him something. Okay. But I won't. Yeah, I'd, be, I'd appreciate that. I'll dude. call him. And be like, what's up, homie? <laughs> or if he wants me to go skate with him, I'll do that for his birthday. Oh, will you? I would. 100%. It just can't be uh, at night during the weekday. That's all. You want me to come at 7 o'clock on a Saturday? I'm up for two hours. 7 o'clock? On a Saturday morning? I'd rather do that than go at 6 o'clock at night. Dude, his first roller hockey game was at 6.30 in the morning. Oh, well, I ain't going to do that. I was like, what? Well, that's only a half hour earlier, dude, yeah, than well, what you're talking about. Maybe I would do that, actually. It's better mm-hmm. in the morning than mm-hmm. at night. I'm a morning motherfucker. Can I give a controversial oh. take on something? Yeah. I'm not trying to be hot take, be hot take. but Who I'm cares? I'm watching the Boston Bruins, and I'm like, you know, all season long, I, I swear, I was saying to myself, like, Linus Olmark, like, what? Wait, did, he, did he just become, like, great? Sometimes you do just become great. Well, do you become great when the team is, like, historically good in front of you? Maybe, like, Benner just became great, you know? Jim Carrey back in the 90s became great and then fell off. So they get hot or they become great? Because there's a big difference. Like, hot. Marty Brodeur is great. Yeah. Patrick Waugh is great. Yeah. Dominic Hoshik is great. Eddie Belfour is great. What's Benner? He's really good, and he was great one season for yeah. sure. He was great enough to win. 
I think Benner is uh, when he's on he's top of when great. he's on top of his game. He's a top yeah, ten goaltender. So Olmark was great when he was great, and then he wasn't. And then he the people in front, the guys in front of him weren't great. Oh, he was letting in some shitty goals though. A couple man. shitty goals, a couple shitty goals. And they got to bring in like he's the. It's going to be the weirdest, most uncomfortable NHL award show in NHL history. I know. Like he's wi- he's winning the uh, the vest now. <laughs> Couldn't even play Game Seven. Jack Adams vest. You got the Jack Selkie. Adams winner. Selkie, maybe. I hear Don Sweeney may be a little bit involved. Like I, I just don't know like how much a general manager needs to be involved with like decision making, lineup decisions, and stuff like that. At some point, you just got to trust the coach. So you think he was- and let him live and die with the results. Like it's on you. You're the head coach. I'm hiring you to be the head coach. I, I think more and more general managers, and there's a time and place for it. I'm not saying you can't ever, you know, get involved in terms of deciding who plays and who doesn't play and who plays with who, who sits. But I think some point in time you just gotta you just gotta turn it over to the head coach. I think when you meddle, it creates a little bit of discomfort and um and it can lead to things kind of, you know, unraveling a little bit. And I think that's what happened in Boston, man. Boston just, their demeanor on the bench, on the ice, they look so take? nervous. What's your hot that take? That Olmark is not that good. Okay. He, and, he, and, he, he and was Don good Sweeney, this season. And Don Sweeney's calling the shots. I don't know. I'm hearing that he might be. Kind of like little Doobie's calling the shots sometimes. Doobie? Doobie do. Who's Doobie, sp- settle down with your stupid ass celebrations. Hey, be like Jason Spezza. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Hey, like, look at look at Jason Spezza. Just who's, be just, like him. who's chill? He's the coolest dude in the world. Not the coolest. The nicest professional. Is he the coolest? He's not the coolest. Okay. That's a, <laughs> he's the nicest. He's the most professional. Very professional. He's a hell of a hockey player. Been around a long time. Might take Doobie's job. How about, like, no shit? How about you look at him and see how he reacts? Have to some things? composure. Fucking chill out. How about watch Stevie Y. Eisman? Just watch guys that are composed. The biggest clown move we've ever seen in the history of NHL GMs was him trying to fight the fans and yelling at the fans, Stupid. screaming at them. He'd get his ass kicked. But then the whole, like, celebration. Listen, they should celebrate. You know, you win a game six to clinch a series. You had not gotten out of the first round. It's an overtime win. I, I understand the excitement and whatever, but I just... Oh, that Bud Light? But he's just <laughs> going so crazy. And you got the media, like national media people, literally tweeting out, more Bud Light has been delivered to the... Uh, Bud Light. To the... Uh, Bud Light, Bud Light. Did Dylan Mulvaney drop it off? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe you know something I don't know. I don't know shit. Um, Bud Light, Bud Light. Bud Light, Bud Light. Cold beer, cold bud. But like cold beer, cold bud. Like, I'm sure the players really want that out there. Like, they're having more Bud Light delivered to the dressing room after a round one win. Yeah. Like, the fan base... And I don't want to chirp the fans, man. No, man. Because no. they've been waiting for a long time. Not doing that. But the overall reaction, I mean, and then the 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 caption on the tweet it says on to round two. You would have thought they won the Stanley Cup. I know. Seattle had never won a round and they didn't even act like that. No, I know. Seattle's like, we've never been there before, but we're gonna act like we've been there before. I don't mind the fans going crazy, man. But the team needs to chill. In the media, just settle the team down. In the media, chill the fuck out. But the fans, do what the fuck you want, paying fucking six grand for a Seat in the three hundreds. No, yeah, but the fed, Screw that. those fans can't even get in. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? The it's real corporate, the, the real fans can't even get in. Yeah, so I'm. I don't care what they do. I want them to be crazy. It's good for us. I love that. Go spend money. Help help out society. Like I, I love that shit. Like help out the restaurants. Like that's that to me is great. But when your team's doing it and your GM's loud, that just usually doesn't bode. Does well. Does anything change for bode you? Well. With the Toronto Maple Leafs right now, with like doobie doobie do, like after getting out of the first round, or do you feel like they got to get out of the second round to truly they get like, out of the third round? Are you going to lose a second round to Florida? You squeaked in. I think you're going to lose. Them? I think they might. If you lose to them, you you think that's a success? The team that you have, I don't think mm-hmm. so. You better calm the fuck down a little bit. Fans, do whatever you want. We're rooting for you. We get it. We get to struggle, especially here in St. Louis, man. We get that. But the fucking team, the media, and little fucking doobie, chill out. Mm-hmm. You got a long road ahead, brother. You're not used to this. Mm-hmm. You got a long no, road ahead. But when you treat your first round win like you just won the Stanley Cup and you exhaust all your emotion, right? right. I want to see if Toronto is able to rediscover it because now they've had several days off. They didn't know who they were going to play. Yeah. 
where Florida's been so locked in and, you know, now they, you know, they, they, they take one day off and now they're right back at it. Oh, I can't wait. And they're on a mission. I can't wait. And Matthew Kachuk wants to make their life so miserable, (laughs) you know, Radko Gudis, Gudis, all these guys. Oh, boy. So I really think that this is going to be a harder series for Toronto than than the Tampa Bay series. Man, and you know what? Everybody's chanting, we want Panthers. Oh, my God. Don't do that. That's how you jinx yourself. You don't wish for a certain team. Man. Whatever the fuck happens, it's in front of you. You mm-hmm. better figure it out. Mm-hmm. Everybody's different. Every team is good. They all have superstars, and they're going to have a game plan on you. Mm-hmm. Don't wish like that. I'm telling you. Listen, I get it. Like You hadn't gotten out of the first round. Like That is so much weight lifted off their shoulders to get out sure. of the first round. Sure. Yeah. And they've been waiting for this. Yeah. you know. But I just want to... Like truly believe that they can handle it, and I don't know if they can. I mean, the media, like who, who they're not even like Maple Leafs media, but they are because they're in Canada. Yeah, but they work for like big national networks in Canada. They don't just cover the Leafs, but like they're so excited, and they can't control it. And they're tweet- to tweet yeah. out to say, "Hey, they're having more Bud Light delivered after Bud a Light, first round win." Bud Light too. Like I'm like I've never ever heard of that. You're in can no? Oh, they're in Tampa. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So they probably like. What do they celebrate? Do they win the cup? I don't mind having a couple beers after. Have a couple That's beers, cool. but, but like they're like treating it like it. it's a locker room celebration. I, I agree. Like Dude, this no, is I like Major League Baseball where they have like oh, full fuck. on like champagne celebrations oh, after he, winning the wild card that game. That's such a nerdy ass thing in the world. You win a wild card Very game. Very nerdy. And they're like, let me go put my glasses on. It's getting in my eye. Ugh. Like, oh God. Mm-hmm. Shut the fuck up. And then they lose right afterwards. They're literally, they did. There's guys on that team that didn't drink alcohol all year long. There's some guys, mm-hmm. and now you win one dink ball wild card game, and you're in a dress room crushing sugar champagne. So these guys are like, I'm drinking now. <laughs> go 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 go. That fucked them up for five days. Mm-hmm. If you're not a drinker right. and you're forced to drink because you're celebrating a wild card win, right. that guy is going to be fucked for two or three days. Wasted. Why do that? Wasted. It's the dumbest thing in the world. You're mm-hmm. forcing alcohol on guys that didn't do anything for a goddamn year. Not all of them, but some. They're like, drink, drink. We won. No, you didn't. You didn't do shit. Did you see Dubas celebrating, though? No, he's so nerdy. His fist oh, pumps. <laughs> oh, he's so nerdy. It's like I, I, but watching Sheldon Keefe, man, uh, be excited was cool. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, uh, but Doobie, cal- just calm down, little guy. Calm down. That's all. No big deal. Hey, just calm down. Tampa Bay. It's not a good loss, man. I mean, like, listen, I, I... Oh, no. You, you did not play well. Mm-hmm. You didn't, didn't play well leading up to the playoffs. But they outplay Toronto at the same time, which is why if I'm Toronto, I'm just like, you know, and don't underestimate the Florida Panthers. I wouldn't either. It's like no one's respecting them. No one's respecting the Seattle Kraken. Like okay. the, two, the two teams that will come in and get in your face, they give you no space, and they're just in your face. And they're just win, win. I want to win. I want to win. Mm-hmm. Now, no other pressure. There's no pressure on the Kraken. There's some pressure on, a, on, on Panthers, but not nearly as much. Like they're just going to go play. Now, the Kraken ordeal. Well, the Colorado Avalanche ordeal with Nashuskin, that whole fucking thing was odd. Listen, all y'all out there, man, I partied hardcore. Shane O'Brien, who we just had on, hardcore motherfucking party song, bitch. During the playoffs, man, you got to chill the you fuck. You better lock it in. You better lock it the fuck in, boy. You're having fucking broads come in the playoffs. Like, I, I know, I don't mean to sound nerdy, but when you have women next to you. On the road, it, On man. the road. It, it's like, well, who cares? I got my rocks off. No. You're up all night with this chick. You're not getting sleep. Mm-hmm. You're trying to wheel. You're waiting. You're wheeling. Like, it's just, you can't do it. Just wait a couple more weeks, man. See how far it goes. And you can bang anything you want. If you're the management, if God, you're, if you're coach, if you're part of that leadership group in Colorado, can you ever forgive that player for that or no? That fucked him over, dude. That now, a- now, you never know, like, what really happened. Like, she may have been just so wasted. Don't. And, and, he, and she gets to his room. She comes there, and he calls... You know, the trainer's probably, like, freaking out. Like, hey, I don't know what's going on. This chick's wasted. You need to come in here and, like... That could be the case. Figure out what the situation is. Yeah. But, you know... It doesn't matter, though, Andy. You're bringing a chick back. Like, that's on your mind. Mm-hmm. Just stay away from that. Stay away yeah. from it. I'm telling you, it's an e- It's a bad look, it's man. It's a terrible look. And they just gave you an eight-year contract extension. Fuck, man. You just... 
you, you had a dark cloud over that organization. Cal McCarr, and I know Shane goes, uh, he didn't think that was a, a dirty hit. That was a dirty hit. I should have chimed in on that. Yeah. Because he said Uppy said it was a dirty hit. I agree with Upshaw. Yeah. That's a dirty hit. It was he a dirty exa- hit. It was. Oh, 100%. Dude, he shot the puck four. Yeah. Dude, four seconds later, Cal McCarr, Cal yeah. tries to finish his check. I'm surprised the injury was as severe as Dude, he severe wasn't paying was. attention. Yeah. He shot the puck over the goddamn net. Then yeah. it's, the puck's like literally in the net. Yeah, he's not thinking Cal so McCarr of all gonna people hit is going to hit him there it either. It plays over. The whistle stopped, mm-hmm. and he gets rocked. I will say this, though, man. Watching Game 7 with Colorado, I do like watching them play. I of like course. watching Nathan McKinnon play. No doubt. He just looks different. I know he does. And, you know, for them to go offside on what would have been the game time goal, man, I, I don't know how you go offside in that situation. Like, going offside is the dumbest thing. And I, I know it can happen, but it's not that hard to stay onside no, either. Sometimes can. it is hard, Andy. Well, in that situation, you, it's not. Are you kidding? Oh, I don't remember that specific situation. Well, because you were sleeping. But if you go back, oh, okay. show him the goal. Well, There's no right. excuse for him to go offside. Okay, I, okay. that particular No situation. excuse. But, like, I, I know where you're going with this when Adam Oates... He's like, you're an idiot if you go He did say that. Adam Oates said, hey. He, I know he did. What did he say? He, he said it. There's no reason to ever, ever go outside. Listen, Sometimes you go offside. I get it. Come on. I get it. You know, especially. Easy. No, like if a player makes a move at the blue line, yeah. he may take you offside. But like and this, but they're just, they're going in a straight line, dude. Well, sometimes you're going 100 miles an hour, too, and you expect, hey, you know I'm coming. Because sometimes when you don't have the puck mm-hmm. and you're trying to get, get gain entry into the offensive zone, you know you got to keep your fucking speed if you want to get a play out. And so sometimes you're like, hey, man, I'm over here. I'm flying. You know I am. Get that damn puck over the line. So it goes both. I get what Adam Oates says. But on the other hand, sometimes it's like i got to keep my speed, figure it out, and help me and chip it to me so I can keep my goddamn speed so we can make a play on this. Looking at another uh, Tibetan Mastiff. Yank. No, you're not. What should I name this bad boy? Uh, you like uh Male or female dogs? And do you have? I, I like female dogs because they're um, more, they're calmer. Yeah, they're not as big. I've always had female animals, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, not always, but uh, it doesn't matter. I like female cats more than anything because are those ways. are those dogs that you have? They get they get no attention. Yeah, right. They look like they're they're, they're orange because they haven't had a bath yeah, in so old. long. <laughs> they haven't had. A, you're, you're not taking you're care of those damn dogs at all. Are they male or female? Female. Andy steals my jokes, like he truly does. Like, you're like that fucking, who's that one dude, Men- Mencia? Like, you steal fucking jokes. Who's Mencia? I don't know. He stole, like, Joe Rogan's jokes, and Joe Rogan called him out. Like, a lot of people, comedians, no, I, you know, a lot of, uh, they steal jokes, dude. It's a big deal. A lot of uh, educators, a lot of scholars are getting caught right now plagiarizing, dude, and stealing from one another. I don't want to say who it was. What? But there was a uh, reporter that used to steal uh, information from other people. Like who? And writes writes like what's, stories. What's with your fucking writes stories, stories with other people's information. Stealing, hey, Cam. Hey, plagiarizing. Hey, do you see this the other day? And like I watch uh I didn't watch the NFL draft. Like I don't give a fuck to be honest with you. Like whoever gets it, like it might might get hurt. Roger Goodell's like hugging everybody, like we're buddies. I'm gonna do a handshake with it's you. It's a like, bro settle, hug, dude. Settle down, Robert. Oh, I, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Like settle down. They don't like you. You're not boys with them. But anyway, there's some creepy ass shit that goes down on these drafts, man. And there's funny things too when the cameras are on you. And uh, I remember the one year where the guy took his gr- guy, the, his girlfriend was there, and she had his phone. He grabs her phone away and like like get the fuck yeah, off. Everybody me. saw that. That was CD Lamb. Yeah, I know. So the other day though, this happens. It's so weird. Like a guy gets drafted, his girlfriend stands up with that ass, mm-hmm. and the dad spanks her. I just gave her a little tap. What do you mean? A little tap. If somebody and it may have been his daughter too. Your, you don't know. Then that's fucking bizarro land. It, just, it didn't like you're like embellishing what happened. Oh my god, you are the most naive. I think people probably do that to you, Andy, and you're like, that's okay. <laughs> you're so fucking naive. You're, it's unbelievable. He smacked her ass twice. It was a little tap. A, that's do- a double unappro- tap. It's inappropriate. 
If I did that to your wife, would you be like, eh, no big deal? Who? I'd be like, listen, let's not do you that. Think that's ridiculous. If somebody talks to my girlfriend, are you out of your mind? He, he may have, he, he probably has so has a close relationship. Oh, with yeah, her. Andy. I, He's known her for I, a very long time. She's know. part of the family. They're celebrating. Andy, and they're saw, having an out of body experience. Andy, he just got drafted in the NFL. Andy, I saw, you know, I, I, she, she was at, the, you know, the massage therapist and he was smacking her ass. Wow, well, it doesn't matter. I don't. That's their relationship, Cam, okay? They have a relationship, okay? What are you talking about? That's a about? massage therapist. So if, weird. if it's the father so of odd. the kid being drafted. I think my dad's smacking Kate's ass. Are you out of your <laughs> He might. I think he I've, might want to, I but think he ain't I've, do it. I think I've seen him do that before. I bet you have. It's just ridiculous. So odd. Ask Kate. So odd, man. Somebody touch your girl's ass. <laughs> your the dad touches It was just kind of where his hand was placed. When of the awkward kind of body Look position it up real for quick. the hug. Look it up real quick, Brody, so I could I could show Andy because he's naive. She Andy. had a white dress on. No, she had a. Uh, uh-uh. I'm talking about a different one then. Uh, 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 uh. She had black on, dude. She had a big old booty, hot as fuck, mm-hmm. and he smacked oh, it. Twice. All that they are, they all are. are so, you see it? Look Let at me this. See. Look at this, Andy. Yeah, it's oh, white. Yeah, oh, it's white. Uh, ah! Yeah. <laughs> That's like a like good game, yeah, you know. Good game. I do that to my wife all the time. I'm you gonna know, do like, it to your wife. Like in the kitchen. Like, I'm gonna you know, do it to your hey, wife. Hey, great right? game. No, you can't do that. Then what do you think that is? Their family. Your dad. Your dad gonna smack your girl's ass? Are no, you crazy? No, but like yeah, their family, dude. Smack an ass. Damn. Weird. Weird stuff, man. Do you think the NHL should adopt the uh, draft philosophy? Like have cameras in everybody's homes, or like, yeah, or do. the hockey players? Like they just don't have enough swag to make it interesting. They like sitting there with like their what, golf. What's everybody else doing? Like with their golf shirt on, being like, yeah, they are kind of nerdy. <laughs> like, but the, but the NFL guys are just sitting there with their. They got shades on, dude. Looking. They got gold teeth. They're all like, they're just, they're just like, you know, cool? they got the, all their boys there. The whole neighborhood's there. Yeah. You know, they're having an all-out party. I think the NHL I've been should, to a couple of those actually. I bet, I bet you get invited <laughs> to all kinds of stuff, Andy. No, I mean, You're like who could, who else could be here with us? Let's see. Oh, what's Andy Strickland doing? <laughs> I've been to a couple draft parties with like uh, for assignments through work years ago, where mm-hmm. like a local kid would get drafted, and you like sit there until you hear their name called, and you know they'll have like a custom made like Tahoe out front with a big like it's like a, like this one kid. His nickname was. Uh, the Kool Aid Man, or something like that. Like I think that's what they called him in the uh, in the in, in, in the neighborhood, very close to my neighborhood, as a matter of fact. But they called him the Kool Aid Man. So he had this custom, like all pimped out, like Navigator or a Tahoe or something, and it was bright red, bright interior, and on the hood of the car was a big the Kool Aid dude. Like, stupid. Okay. I mean, and he had Kool Aid like itched, like itched into the uh, stitched into the seats. And everything. Stupid. There's Kool Aid emblems everywhere, and uh, we did the uh, interview right outside the Kool Aid vehicle. As a matter of it's fact, it's so funny. Andy's like, I like how Andy like tells me about being drafted. Like, tell me more about being drafted, Andy. What's it like? Tell me. Well, what'd you do? Draft in Toronto, man. Oh, you went to the draft? Well, yeah, I did talk to twenty teams, and I had to do all kinds of workouts and shit. And then I uh, had to wait. Now we're waiting, and I told the story. I don't know if I told him the pod, but like. Um, I remember in the third round, the Devils were all, all over me. I knew they were going to draft me. It was my first fucking meeting mm-hmm. with Lou at 6 o'clock in the morning. And uh, and he and all of a sudden, from the Windsor Spitfires. <gasps> Steve Ott. And my dad, I got my God, let's go. Yes. Aaron Niddle. <laughs> and he's sitting right next to us with the same agent. And I'm like, ah, oh, oh, yay, Nitz, good job. Uh. Your dad's hitting Kate's my dad, ass. My dad's like, what? He's smacking Kate was, Kate's ass. Kate, Kate was nowhere around then. <laughs> I was single. I was a single shit-kicking motherfucker. But that kind of sucked. And then we got drafted. Everybody's like, hey, I'm shaking hands. Mm-hmm. No, me and my dad said, fuck yeah. Stood up. Fucking so hell, when I went baby. to the, uh, I, I, I've been to draft parties at the Boys and Girls Club too, Cam. But yeah, one man, of the other badass. draft parties I was at, I became so close with the family. That they had me MC his foundation, his big dinner at the Ritz. Like Ooh. a couple of, Lawrence Maroney. Who? Lawrence Maroney. He was a first round pick of the uh, Patriots. Played in the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've Starting heard running back. I've he was him. on the team that went 16 0 that lost yeah. to the Giants in yep. the Super Bowl. But he scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl. And uh, I'll never forget, I was uh, emceeing the event at the Ritz. You got a bunch of like other NFL players there. And the mom comes up to me and she's like, She's like, Andy, you got to come do the prayer. I was like, What? Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, they gave me the microphone, dude. 
You did the I'm prayer. standing. I, and I don't think I've ever really done one. I don't know how to do it. Certainly anything. publicly. I, I don't even know how to do it, you know, to be honest Praise with you. Praise Jesus. Well, I know that, but, like, I'm just not good at that. You, you just know? say, thank you, Jesus, for the food, Okay, right? I, did, I did all of it. Is it Jesus And I God? went on and on and on. They're like, okay, the, the, like, pra- the prayer yeah. is, got, when's it going to end? And I'm like. I'm like a uh, like like Reverend like Jesse Jackson, dude. I'm like walking like back Jesse and Jackson. forth, <laughs> walking back and forth on the stage, dude. Just giving like the, a, the Lord's here. Oh yeah, praise but, Jesus. And people are just dying, like you know, not disrespecting any prayer or anything like that. But it was like among the best prayers people had ever heard. Probably, they told man. me that night. No, you know, yeah. you know the Lord. You know. So, can you give us a prayer, please? Uh, God forgive me. The Lord is my shepherd. He knows what I want. Mm. Um, I uh, I don't know. I had a prayer. Do that you pray before dinner? No. Do you pray before lunch? No. Like, did you grow up ever praying? No. Did you ever go to your friend, my family? You ever go to a friend's house for dinner? Mm-hmm. And before you eat, hut, hut, hut. oh yeah, we gotta we gotta say grace. Like, yeah, okay. Like, go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah, and you gotta respect that, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing I I, I said uh, the religious folk that. Um, like if I'm with a chick and I'm 26 years old, and we get invited somewhere, mm-hmm. and the religious people that um, own the house say I can't sleep in the same bed as my 25 oh, year old had, girlfriend, I'm I've, like, are you I've out of here? That happen. What the fuck do I look like? Mm-hmm. Fucking 26 years, old, I can't sleep with a girlfriend. I've been banging out for fucking. Well, a year okay, now. well they don't know that. Okay. I'm like, no, I'm sleeping. Not with, in their house. Like, I'm not staying there. I, I never stay at houses. But my buddies, I, no one's ever done that to me because I don't I don't go to people's houses like that. Like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> you wouldn't sleep no with somebody did, else's listen, house. Listen, no, no religious persons invite me down to a fucking party house. And, you know, it's just not happening. They're like, Cam, let's go for a walk. Cam, let's, yeah. Cam, Cam, what are you doing in there? You have your separate room, okay? You're 26 years old. Like, I would never go to a they house. They want to find out what's going on with you. Yeah, they, they mm. want to get Satan out of me. Yeah, they're like know? telling their daughter, I don't think this is the right one for you. I don't, he's not <laughs> the right kind of person, okay? I had that. I had a college girlfriend. She was from Minnesota. We used to go by. I used to stay at her house when I'd go home with her. Mm-hmm. And we always had to stay in like separate rooms and stuff like that. She creeped down like there, a you know? Child. Like <laughs> she, a child. She'd find her way down there. Well, yeah. What am I doing? <laughs> I just wouldn't go to anywhere. Like, I just don't like being around. Like, I like my own thing, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't like staying with other people unless I'm so comfortable with them, man. I can't do it, dude. Mm. I got my own game plan, man. I don't like, I like to be on my own shit, you know? Mm. That's all. No big deal. I think PLZ's mad at me. I got invited to his birthday party Saturday night. Yeah. And um, first off, I went out Friday night, too. And it was like a parent party for, like, the school. <laughs> no, dude, it really was though. It was at like this. It was like a very nice house. Oh yeah. Like and there's, you know, I don't know. You just a lot of different co- and people. When they get out, they just like to cut loose. Oh god, that must have been a badass party, Andy. <laughs> you go to the best parties, man. We Ubered. We Ubered to that party oh, game. That's the rock and roll. Fucking <laughs> so down so it. we were out late, and then I had to get up early for the roller hockey. But the next night, we uh. So Peels, he's like, are you coming? Are you coming? I kept saying, yes, I'm coming. But then he's like, is Laurie coming? I'm like, no, she's not fucking. She ain't doing two nights in a row. Chloe had a soccer game late at night. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the game's going on, Cam. And like a tornado comes. I see the anvil clouds yeah. starting to form. Mothership. Yeah. And like all of a sudden, and I'm soaking wet, dude. It was just, it came out of nowhere. Wind's blowing. And I, 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 I'm like, I couldn't go straight from there like I, the plan was because I was all like, just completely soaking wet. So I told Peels, I said, hey, I don't think I'm making it over. Yeah, I, yeah, it's all good. I think they, they're fine without you. <laughs> no one's like, where's the Indy? We can't have a party. Where's he at? It's all good. Well, man. no, they may have said that. Maybe. Maybe you're right. They're like, we can't party. I don't know why you assume that. I just don't. Look, like, I... I I, even parties, man. Like, uh, I'll, I'll go to parties, but I, I'm just, man, I'm just doing my own. I thing. want everyone in Toronto to leave my boy Chris Weidman alone, too. Oh no, or Wides. <laughs> well, you know, he said it. He said it. It's all good. Ain't that big of a fucking deal? You fucking put a gosh dang, you know, janitor in with a minute left and takes him 14 minutes to put his fucking equipment on, and you're up by seven. Like, if I'm Chris Weidman, I'm like, go fuck yourself. I told you, I, I would. What are you talking about? When the fucking Canadians played the Leafs, mm-hmm. the Leafs put in a oh god a 
uh, a, a goaltender. A, a guy who works the, at the Subway. Ins- the insurance salesman? Works at fucking Was it Subway. Jared? It's Jared from Subway, the creepo. And he gets out there, and it takes him forever to get on the ice, and they're up by seven. And ca- little Doobie's got a cold down. Like, put him in there. Doobie's if, fist pumping. You know, he's, he's arguing with fans. If I'm Montreal, I'm like, I'm going to start a shit show. Mm-hmm. But no one did. But then White's like, fuck that. Hope they fucking lose in the first round. And they didn't. So now he's kind they of should have. He's eating a shit sandwich, too. But well, they should have lost. We're going to get him on anyway. Yeah, we are. Wides. Yeah. They should have lost. Yeah, they should have. You know, a couple of how games, do you give but up, they didn't. How do you give up a 4-1 lead? It happens all the time. Listen, we kind of addressed this with uh, uh, Shane, Obi. You call him Shane all the day. You're just like so proper. Well, uh, Shane, I can I ask you how it was in Nashville, Shane? Well, I, I don't like to. Shane, who'd you go out with, Shane? Yeah, I, who did you go out with? Like, <laughs> I, I want to know. Like, what's up? Who's cool? But, like, I don't like calling. Everybody's OBO. I, I just kind of like to have my yeah. own thing. Yeah, people, okay. You know? Yeah. I like, you know, I'm, yeah. I like to be original. Okay. Unlike you. Yeah. You'll copy what I say and keep it for yourself. That was a original. radio show. Mm. Make make the same jokes I make, and then you act like they're yours. Mm. Just that put is, a fucking lawsuit down on your ass. That is not true. That's exactly. Everything I do, Andy tries to one-up me on. Everything I like in life now, Andy's like, I'm. I like this now. I'm. A, I'm this guy. No, you're not. Have your own thing. Good God. <laughs> Seriously. Hey. So, uh, did you agree with my tweet on Tampa Bay? I didn't. I, I didn't. didn't de- I didn't delete it. Why are you saying I deleted it? Well, sometimes you do, but I, I didn't mind that. Who cares? You know what put me in a deep hole? I get very. Dr- Cam has to like give, give me like psychological God. therapy when these things Ain't happen. That big of a deal. <laughs> He's like, you didn't say anything political. You didn't say, I like Kim Jong-un and what he stands for. Or, or, or fucking Putin's a man. He didn't do that. Well, is my you point gave a validated? Fucking, yes. I agree with you. I'm not going to lie to you. Now, I love Tampa. And I love all the guys there. I love Stammer. I love Coop. I love Patty. I love all of them. But they, it was a goofy bubble. That bubble thing was a fucking goofy. And then you playing tr- Montreal? Was goofy. Now you won, mm-hmm. and you got that cup, and you got the ring, and it ain't going anywhere. No one's going to take that away from you, mm-hmm. unless you kill your wife and her. Oh my god! Well, saying, Who, like, OJ what Simpson. are you talking about? I'm just saying, like OJ Simpson. Oh, I'm just saying. No, it's a Norm yeah. McDonald thing. You think at the he? SBs. You think he did it? He's like, what the fuck do you think? Some people don't think. Of, he well, they're stupid. Mm-hmm. That's a stupid. You think thing. it's like a slam dunk? Hell yeah! So why the killer? So why did he get off? Because because the glove, yeah. Because Johnny Cochran was unbelievable, and the and the prosecuting attorneys Shapiro. fucked. They fucked up big time. They messed up in a lot of different ways. They didn't have their shit together, mm-hmm. and Johnny Cochran did. So my point with that whole thing is, remember when Norm McDonald went to Aspies, and he calls out a guy. He goes, "Hey, you, you won the um, Heisman. No one will ever take that away from you. Well, unless you kill your wife and the waiter." <laughs> yeah. So anyway. My um, point is with the, with 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 Tampa, that was goofy, goofy, goofy. It was goofy, mm-hmm. but you still won and you still figured it out. But you're, to your point with the tweet, I'm like, yeah, I kind of get that. You yeah. need to win one more to make really solidify. Um, the Kardashians' uh, dad was one of the uh, attorneys too. Yeah, I know. yeah, have you been keeping up with the Kardashians or? Nah, not really. You know, Courtney just got married to the guy from uh, the drummer from. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like I like him from Travis uh, Barker. Travis Barker. Travis Barker. He's got tattoos all over oh, his head. He's a goofy dude. looking son of a bitch, but he's an awesome drummer. Three or uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, it's not three eleven. No, it's uh, Black. what are they called? Black. Uh, no, not the Black Eyed Peas. Blink one eighty two. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Fuck, Thank you, I knew that. So anyway, Travis Barker got into a scary plane crash, plane crash dude. Show me on a private jet. Ugh. Horrifying, and he barely survived. How did he survive that? He got the fuck out. I think it was off takeoff. It was, and all of a sudden they're like, and they strew, and it blows. Up. I think people died in that month. Really? And he fucking crawls out, had burns all over him. Really? <gasps> yes. That's a private jet. That's a badass. That's a thirty million dollar jet, and it still crashed. Do you Damn, think that boy. The, is that the scariest thing that could ever happen? Oh God. Oh God! What's I mean, scarier than a uh, plane crash? Um, there's a lot of things. Getting kidnapped, getting kidnapped. By I was Al- reading about that in Venezuela, Elizabeth Smart, dude. Elizabeth Smart, remember like oh what my happened God, to her? out the window, out the window, and her little sister's like, 
What happened? And it's some weirdo. It's gets, not the John Bonet Ramsey. No, situation. that's different. No, she died, and I think her family. That did was it. in Boulder. But, uh, but this Elizabeth Smart, very wealthy. El- yeah, they all are. So was Elizabeth Smart and their family in Utah. And this son of a bitch worked on their house a couple months beforehand, and scouted it out. And they he crawls up the side of the house and snags her out of the fucking window. And they're like, "Where's she at? Where's she at?" Three miles away, they're stuck. That poor little girl. How old was she? Like thirteen, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, Sandy. How do they? How do you kidnap a thirteen? You fucking girl? grab her and you take. It's like picking you up. If I wanted to kidnap you, I could do it right now. That is not true. Yeah, goddamn right it is. How would you do it? I'll I mean, pick you up. I'll smack you in your head, and you'll knit knocked out in two seconds. And I'll do have my way oh, with so your they little knock bitch them ass. Out? I'll have my way with you, boy. Remember that? I'll dude? take you to my little cabin in the middle of the woods. Hey, like, the, oh boy, there dude. was a guy here in town, the emos guy. He yes, worked at a pizza place with the two little boys. And he, one, I think two. Well, he, one two. of them was there for a long time. Two of them were there, and he he right stole in these kids. Missouri. Yep. And it wasn't that far from where I grew up. Right down. Or from where I live. I mean. And he was right down the road. Yeah. And he was a he worked for Domino's. And he like he kept these kids hostage in his house, I dude. Know. For worked at Emos. That's the scary. Which is thing. an e which is a, a popular local pizza Emos. chain. Yeah, he was a delivery driver. No, and I think he was like the manager of the cook. Whatever. And he took these little kids. Devlin. Sean Mike, Hornbach. Something Devlin. Sean Hornback and somebody else. And it was like a ten year old. Was it deal. Michael Devlin? Something. Look it but up, one kid everybody. Got, one kid got kidnapped, and he was there getting tortured for years. Uh, and another kid got kidnapped, and, and something happened. Somebody found a, something of something, and they got caught. That's number one. He was playing with kids inside that at the apartment complex, too, Andy, occasionally. That's just, you die in a plane crash, okay, fine. You Boom, you, you, you're suffering, you're going to pass out, you die. Uh, but if you get kidnapped by a motherfucker, and you got to live a life for a decade mm-hmm. in hell, Especially if you're a girl. How's he doing, dude? Oh man. No, the I kid. Andy, I don't know. The 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 guy who kidnapped him got killed in prison. There's a lot of kidnappings. These hillbilly motherfuckers will pick up a girl in the middle of the Iowa and they know her track where she walks to the bus and they'll pick her up and they'll drive down to Texas mm-hmm. and take her and they'll impregnate her and keep her outside and impregnate her, impregnate okay, her. I've never and they'll heard have of kid- that. Yes, happens all the time. And how fucking ten kids. Oh, my God. Yes. And then she finally gets out. There's another girl. Dude, oh, oh, they God. escape. Remember that dude in Cleveland? Yes. Who had the three those? three girls. Yes. I know. And the black guy goes, man, I, I'm out here. And these three white girls come right up to be screaming. I go, hell, I knew something was wrong. You remember that in Cleveland? Yeah, no, I remember. Scary, I watched that. Dude. He died in prison, too. Fucking better. Weirdo. Remember, he was in court. He was like, I'm not a monster. Listen to me. All you out there. Tell your daughters. They had a little. You tell your. They had a kid. Kids, and you tell your wife. A, a little like toddler that lived there too. You tell your wife when 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 Kate jogs. I like out where we live now. Even in like Eureka, but like she would jog around near the highway, and like there's an access right to Highway 44, and she had her headphones on, and I'm like, take one of them out. Yeah, I, know. I need you to be able to fucking hear Here. if you have a car pull up right next. You know how easy it is, to Andy? If my wife was jogging and I see her jogging, she's got headphones on. And you I think pull, you could snatch her? Fucking two seconds. No chance. You're so, you don't think she'd scream? I, I will grab her in two seconds with my big and old fucking hand over her in the car. And, put her in the car. and she's done. She's done. I get on Highway 44, I'm gone. What if so? My, so what I if tell, she's like fighting him while he's driving? What are you gonna do? I don't know. I here's, saw. Here's I saw, what I, say. I saw a video today of a guy who here's attacked a bus driver, dude. He punched him three times. Yeah, okay, hey. I, I, you found videos, Andy. Yeah. I, I know. Thank you. <laughs> but if I'm, a, I tell my wife, and you tell Chloe, and all, yeah, oh, and your fucking and wife Ivy. too. Your wife say, "Hey, uh, I'm walking down." Somebody ever touched my little Ivy? You grabbed him. By the goddamn nutsack so fucking hard. When do I and have this conversation? When do I have this conversation? You squeeze it. And you put him down and you try to get away. Like, that's the only thing you do to a grown man. If you want to have the Achilles heel, you grab him by the goddamn nutsack and you mm-hmm. squeeze as hard as you can and let them fucking cripple and you get away. That's the only way you're going to do it. You take him When do nuts. I have that conversation? I don't. I would say talk to them and speak. Be aware of your surroundings. Yeah. Even when I go downtown, man, if I'm walking with Kate, mm-hmm. I have my motherfucking head on a swivel. Like, I see you behind me. 
I see you walking up. You're not gonna get. Uh, you're not gonna get a jump on me. Not crazy. Not hyper contract. But if you're in a weird ass spot and you see some shady motherfuckers walking, mm-hmm. Andy's probably like, "Loop do 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 do." I'm looking around. Hey, how much money do you have, honey? Let's <laughs> let's count it real quick. No, keep an eye out. Hand That's me, all. Hand me your wallet. Hey, honey, hand me your wallet with all the money in it. No, no. Just be aware. That's this all. is where it benefits me that I played cornerback. Yeah. Because yeah, I had. Yeah, you back a guy up. Well, no, because I had to have my head on a swivel yeah. to be able to know if the ball was coming. Is it a run play cam? Is it a pass play? All these is radio it a, guys. Is it, is it play action? The radio and TV guys are the best athletes in the world. Is it, is it a play action? It's unbelievable. Uh, do I need to get to the line of scrimmage? Why is everybody in radio and TV, are they the, they're the best athletes in the world? <laughs> they are. It's unbelievable. Just ask them. They'll tell you. They'll tell you about their junior varsity lacrosse fucking game where they, Cam, I, I put somebody on their ass. You'd be, no, you didn't. I put them on their ass. I knocked him right out. No, you didn't. When I got into a fight in high school, cool. I knocked that guy out. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You don't think? You don't even know how to make a fucking fist. You knocked the guy out. No, you didn't. Don't lie to me. You radio and TV people. Best athletes in the world. It's unbelievable. Mm. Calm down. Write an article. Interview somebody. That's what you do. Mm. God, if I have to hear about other people's fucking athletic ability. It's, it's crazy. You guys are all the same. So Devlin, just so people should research this, man. You can Google it um, and find out all the information. I was glued to the television because I was so into this story. There are certain news stories that I wouldn't mind covering. This is one of them. I, yeah. I'd no. cover that. Weather. What would, would you would, you would you want to interview one of those guys? Yes, me too. A psycho killer. Yeah. Damn right, Andy. Hundred percent. Well, maybe we should get one on. I'll do that, homie. Should we get one on? We have to go to jail and like interview him in jail. I think that'd be cool. Fuck yeah, a psycho killer. I would do that a hundred percent. I'd rather do that than interview like uh, John Hamm or like somebody that's like not a hockey guy because yeah. we're kind of thinking that way too. And you guys let us know too. But the hockey guys are still abundant, and we love it. Like, Shane yeah. O'Brien was awesome. Just wait till you hear this, dude. He's so cool. But, like, the next step for me, I like to have a musician, a musician more than uh, an actor or anything. I'd have a musician or a stone-cold killer. Well, let's get uh, Barker oh. on. Who? Travis. Oh, God, yeah. I'd love to have him on. Are you kidding? Get him. Would you You're ever get a get tattoo him. on your head like that? Fuck no. Like it's all over his head. Yeah, but he's already committed to it. Like he's yeah, a rock how star. How bad did that hurt? He's he's got no hair. Like he's a rock star, so it works for him. He's very talented drummer. So good. He's damn. Like good. among the best drummers going. I don't know. About no, that. he's played with a lot of different bands. He's done a number listen, of different. Listen, listen. The way he's good, but he's not one of the best, dude. Like you, not, who, you, what are you, the drum guy? Like well, you know who's the who's, kind of who's better than him? About fucking Neil Peart. Okay. Dana Carey. Fuck yeah. Are, are those from fucking... Uh, no, Neil Peart's from Rush. Pantera. Yeah, okay. Dana Carey's from Tool. Yeah, Tool. Fucking Vinnie Paul. Pantera, way yeah. better. Yeah, Tool. Double bass. Yeah. Cam. Cam thinks Tool is like... Uh, Tool's unbelievable. That's a great band. Maynard James Keenan. Unbelievable. What about Fishman? Who? From Fish. I don't know, Andy. Nerdy ass, hippie ass shit that you listen to. Yeah, they're good, but... He's a pretty damn best. good drummer. The metal, the metal drummers are the best of the best. It's the hardest fucking beat to keep up with. Okay, like you go to the drummer from U two. That band's the best of the best. The drummer ain't shit. He's yeah. a handsome guy. You ever had that? But buddy, you can replace him. You ever had that buddy that's like, you know, like he might be kind of good at like guitar and stuff like that, and, but he, he can play like everything. But he he doesn't. He's never been taught how to play anything. And then all of a sudden, you see like a drum kit, and he just gets on there and just starts like. Well, musicians, Wait, on the way, you're like, damn, dude, like, how do you know how to play the drum? He's like, I don't. No, but... I just know how to, like... Yeah, like, just like, um... Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, you know the beat, you know the... Mm-hmm. Like, dun, dun, and they're dun, just dun, dun, unbelievable. Dun, dun, and you're a bassist. Yeah. Bassists know how to play drums more yes, than anything. Yes, yes. Because, like, dun, dun, he dun, is dun, a bassist. Dun, dun, dun. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's, con- it's correlated. So you just know, dun, 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 dun. With a guitar, you gotta be, like, you, you're, you're... Now you're Bass players are typically the coolest in the band. Well, they're typically the most irrelevant. That's not for true. the most part. For the most part, I I'd don't say know how you could say that. I would say if you look at the popularity of bands, sure. I would say for the most part, besides Red Hot Chili Peppers and Guns things N like Roses. that, Guns N' Roses. Who's the bass player for Guns N' Roses? Slash. No, it's not. 
Oh my he's God, the guitar don't, player. Don't take that he's, out. No, take don't it take out. Don't take that out. No, take no, no, no. Out. no. He's the, he's the Brody, guitar. Brody, don't listen to him. Slash with is shit. the guitar player. Yes, he's a lead guitar. Yeah. Who's a bassist? You don't know. Damn. Who's a bassist for Red Hot Chili Peppers? You know. It's him. not Flea. Yes, it is it Flea. It is Flea, okay. Yeah, Flea's huge because he's like bang, da, da, dang, da, blah, blah, yeah. blah, and he's crazy. And like he's fucking cool looking. He's naked on stage. Yeah, he's loud. There's a lot of bass players. Have you ever gone to a Chili Peppers yes. concert? Point fast, are they, are they? Are they? They're on. Oh, Anthony so, Kiedis is awesome. He was on Joe Rogan the other so day. So listen, Check that out. there's a big event coming out, like a big concert thing that's happening. Awesome bands. Who? Name me awesome bands, though, Andy, because I don't trust you. Well, Ice Cube's on one of them. But I like Ice Cube, dude. And Hell so yeah. they want us to come and like do some interviews in the tent with all these different people. I'll do that. We're at uh, Forest Park. Yeah, I'll do that. So they already asked. Is it me, all like rap? No, okay. not at all. I'm just asking. It's kind of like a mixture of all different types of stuff. I like Ice Cube, man. I like him as an actor, and I like him as a musician. Yeah. Ice Cube is cool as shit. He probably knows a lot about... I, I, we probably know a lot of uh, mutual friends and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. He and Ice Cube. Andy hanging out. Little nerd buddies back I used to day. love NWA Andy, back Andy in was the in day. like a little convertible with his little nerd buddies. Tell Jason and to play like, some they're, NWA and they're listening, on this edition. And they're listening. He, Andy's listening to like hardcore rap with his buddies. Like, hey, we're going to school. And you see, like, a couple dudes pull up looking. I'm like, Jesus, buddy. Never half embarrassing. Dude. They'd be like, ah, what's that strict dog? Like, oh, look, look at these guys. They're cool. And they're a little convertible Cavalier. They're pink convertible Cavalier. Jamming out the hardcore rap. Good God. What's wrong with pink? Nothing. <clears throat> it suits you perfectly. You're looking at that pink, high school. pink Jeep. I got my Jeep. Small wheels, two-door, soft top with Kate flames are, on the side Kate from Bellman. Kate and I around all, all weekend in that Jeep. It was beautiful. A little chilly, man. Like, I had to blast the heat, How's man. the gas mileage? Great. It's a little little 3.5. Mm-hmm. Well, when I get my side-by-side, I'll come out. Yeah. Yeah, you will. Andy, Andy, now Andy talks about side-by-sides. <laughs> now he's a, he's a countryman. He's an outdoorsy. Hey, best movie ever that Will you've you never seen. My top five? Countryman. It's an awesome movie. Country Man? It's like this little roster. What's guy. your top five movies? Go. I'm not top five movies, go. Dazed and Confused. Okay. That's a great movie, dude. Yeah. Keep going. Um Coming to America. Um Go ahead. Because I gotta think about five movies now. Cause I, I I'm not great at watching movies. Like I don't stay quiet during movies. Um I, I, I you know, not talking for two hours. Give me hours. your five best movies. Days of Confused and then Coming to America. What else? <laughs> okay, you're boring. No, no, no. Hold on. I'll give you mine. Hold on. Uh, Caddyshack. Caddyshack's cool. Yeah, absolutely. The okay. comedies don't put me in the top five. Well, just settle down. Here. I got. Hold on. I haven't given you all five of them. Well, you're boring me, dude. Like, you're um, just like thinking of Happy Gilmore. Okay. Here's okay, mine. Hold on. <laughs> I'm, for, I'm forgetting another one here, but it's coming. Um, I would say, well, NWA, actually, the movie was uh, a, a great movie, just about how they uh, started I'll, the I'll band and that. everything. Alive, where they had to eat each, eat each other, you know, in the yeah, plane crash. This, that We've story, talked about that. That storyline's good, yeah. but the movie's not. Well, th- that's your, great. that's your, I know, that's you know, good. I mean. Opinion. Okay. Yeah, I know. Young blood. Okay. Um, <laughs> how about, uh. I oh, no, slap shot's better. Didn't say slap shot then. <laughs> okay, so Brody, what am I doing? Um, seven. That's a damn good movie, boy. Seven, damn good movie. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Now I'm curious. Um, now you're getting in the rhythm. The Hangover. Yeah, <laughs> comedy. Good God. I'll give you a couple of mine. Jaws. <laughs> okay. Well, everybody's saying that, and we all know that. You didn't. Well, we all know that. It's you didn't give me a real movie that we all, you know, like you know, we we all know that's Last a good movie. Higgins. Okay, we know that too. Okay, what's it about? The tribe. It's very tribal. Who's in it? Um, Sit man. Down. Well, I, I'm not good. Daniel at, Day Lewis. Yeah, I'm not good at actors and actresses. Terminator Two was on the Godfather is a great Godfather. One too. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I didn't say those because those are like E. T. All those. Those are like I, I, you know. Okay. <laughs> good God. Yeah, man, I, I I I like you know even even Top Gun in '86 was so freaking badass. What Alien, about Forrest Gump? Forrest Gump was fantastic. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite movies ever. Forrest Gump, you mm-hmm. damn right. I love damn Forrest right. Gump. Oh, it's so good. Tom Hanks was, he was so unbelievable in that. They all were. Rain Man. It was okay. That was okay. I like Alien. 
I like those hardcore movies, man. Um, the Exorcist. Space Odyssey. The Exorcist is up there for me. Oh, my God. Oh. I have to put it in there. It's a what about the, uh, that little kid, Sixth Sense? Yeah, that was good, Andy. That was a good movie. 1999, Bruce Willis. Yeah, that was a good movie. What do you name the year that it came out? Yeah. Like, you're like, you're, you have an amazing memory, Ken. I don't have one. I just know. I just know that. I think it's a 99. How many movies will you watch a week? Oh, now none. Okay. None. Like, I can't tell you the last movie I that can't, I sat down. It's got to be a I documentary. I like documentaries. I know. Conor McGregor's got a documentary coming out on Netflix. He does? I'm going to watch that like you can't believe. Yeah, I'll watch it, too. You want to come over? No. And, like, watch why, it? Why would I do that? You want to come over and watch the documentary? Watch a movie with you and your family? <laughs> Fuck. You out come on over, mind. dude. Fucking chaos going on over there. I like Silence. Silence of the Lambs. That was damn good, boy. It's a hell of a movie. Damn good, boy. Do you ever see the movie The Cell? Well, cell, you mean Cell Block? No, 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 no. The Cell with Jennifer Lopez back oh. in the day. The Cell was about a serial killer. Oh. It's got this girl kidnapped, Andy. Okay. And the only way to get to figure out where this chick is, because I think they, they found him, but they don't know where the girl is, mm-hmm. is it get inside his mind. Oh, my God. And it is. Horrific. It's like David Frost. That's what he did to Mike Danton. So they go in this like weird thing where they they lay on this thing and the the, the killer's right there and they get into his head. Mm-hmm. So meaning my dreams are so hardcore, Andy. I'll have horrific even to this day nightmares sometimes. Most of the time it's it's always about me trying to make a team and I'm like, I'm retired anyway, I don't need to be in shape, like a weird thing like that. But sometimes they'll get me. And my mind will fucking go to the scariest, darkest places ever, dude. That's why when I read books, I don't watch the movie. Because I got my fucking, it ain't going to be scary in what's in my head. So they get into the serial killer's head. And they have to figure out the puzzle and pieces to see where this little girl's at. It's horrific. Okay. Scary. Awesome. How awesome. Do, how do you do that? Mm. Well, it's like an advanced technology that they had in the movie. Like it spits out like information? No, you, you just jump in his, you jump in his dream. So imagine you coming into my head. I do and not want to do that. And going into my deep, dark, horrific, oh scary God. scene. And I'm going to set up for you. And you got to talk to me in there mm-hmm. where I got demons everywhere. Like, do you remember, your, do you remember your dreams? Rah, sometimes. Actually, all the time. Do you? Yes. Yes, I do, Andy. Do you ever wake up and be like, oh, okay, it was just a dream? Oh, God. Like, I tell myself yeah, during God the dream that right. it's not real. Not all the time I can do that. Sometimes it's I'll, such a relief. Isn't it? I'll when like, oh, it didn't really happen. When I was doing heavy duty heroin painkillers, heroin. Oh, it's the same thing. Were you shooting heroin? No, I would never shoot anything in my body. I would snort it. You would? I would snort like heroin. Would, yeah, I snorted heroin before. I've snorted meth. I've snorted a mixture or two. Yes, it's not good. Where'd you do that? My fucking house. With who? Um. By myself one time with people the other time. Are you playing this? hockey at this time? Hell yeah. Yep. How do you start doing heroin? Um. Somebody says, "Hey Cam, try this." Yeah, that. I and was Cam's addic- like, "I like trying things." You see, like I, I was wondering how I it was, happened. Well, I was already addicted to painkillers, and I okay. couldn't get any more, and that was the next step. And so I would do that, but I'd just snort a little bit of it. I've snorted meth before. It kind of too. was a painkiller. You're saying? No, it's the same. Painkillers are synthetic heroin. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's okay. what I mean. Yeah, but heroin's heroin, and heroin can listen. If you in take a pill a, form, no, no. If you take a pill, you know what you're getting. When you snort a little line of that fucking brown heroin dust, you don't know what's in that mug. Could be fentanyl, could be fucking anything. Now, back in the day, wasn't that much fentanyl going around, but I snorted that thing and almost fucking done your. So, what me. are they? When people sell heroin, are they selling the brown dust? They're selling a little balloon knot, a little balloon knot. Uh, black tar heroin. It's just like a little powdery stuff, and you take it, and you put it on a spoon, and you light it up, and you fucking you burn it off, and you usually inject that. When you inject it, it goes right into you. You snort it, it goes right into you too. You could smoke it as well. It's horrible. It's a horrible, horrible. Is that demon. the worst drug to take? No. Nope. What do you think the worst drug is? Uh, I'm gonna say crystal meth. It's up there. Um, I mean heroin. Keep certainly. going. Heroin. Keep certainly going up there. Alcohol. Really? Yep. Alcohol is number one, dude. Yeah. See, I don't. I don't it look is. at that as the drug, but it is a drug. Number one. Number one. Alcohol. Would you include beer in that category? Yeah. I mean, what about seltzers? 
No, my point is with alcohol. When you're an alcoholic and you're dug deep, mm-hmm. trying to get off of alcohol is the hardest thing in the world. Really? You could have a seizure and die. Really? Fuck yes, homie. You're not going to have a seizure off heroin. You're going to feel like you're dead, but you're not going to die. So these guys you that go to jail of and of prison, like where, where, do they treat them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, do they know when they're like... Yeah, they'll treat them. What's, there's a term for it when you're coming off of alcohol, for you're example. Withdrawing. Okay. You're withdrawing off of it. Yeah. Alcohol is the worst. Why do you think that is? I don't know, man. It's everywhere. If I get up in Missouri mm-hmm. at 6 o'clock in the morning, yeah, I could go three miles down the road and buy any fucking thing I want. Mm-hmm. Three o'clock in the morning, I got to call my dipshit down in fucking St. Louis to drop me off a bunch of fucking pills. You don't know what that dipshit's doing. Right. He might not pick up his fucking phone. He might not even drop it off. You might not have the money for it. Do you think alcohol it. is easy to become addicted to? God, yeah. Do you think everyone is kind of addicted to it? That's why they no, drink all the you're time? you're not. Brody's not. But I drink alcohol all you're the time. You're not addicted to it. You don't drink like I do. I'm addicted to it. You're not. You're not. Do you wake up and crave a beer? No, you don't. I do. No, but I will say this. When it's the afternoon and it's nice out, well, yeah, Andy. and it's Saturday, I cr- and it's Saturday and it's 4th of July, I yeah, cr- I know. I, 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 it's 4th of July. You're out of touch, man. I, I crave you that. Are, I crave man. a seltzer. It's all good. I like that you're out of touch, man, because I don't want you getting the cam in touch. And, the cam and strict mango lemonade I just hard don't, seltzer. Everybody, y'all out there, man, I get texts from you guys every motherfucking day. But when you wake up. Every day, I love You're saying you. you wake up, you can crave it. And the crave first thing. Andy. It's like a cigarette. I'll wake or up. Or like some, coffee. I'll wake up some Saturdays, and I'll get up, and I'll crack a beer at 6 o'clock in the morning while Kate's still sleeping. Now, does she know you do that? Yep. And when she hear, do, you, do you say yoink? Mm, yeah. <laughs> I can't help not saying it. It's not good. This is not funny. Because it's still a problem. So what does she think when she sees you it's doing that? not good, that? man. Like she worries about me, you know? She does. Well, just don't do that. Oh, okay. At 6 in the morning. Sometimes I just, you know, I'll have, have you, a couple. And I, I have you ever tried non-alcoholic? Fuck, are you, dude, you're, you're out of touch. No, I'm asking. No, man. Because you're addicted to the taste. No, I'm addicted to the feel. I get it. But I'm saying a lot of... I'm addicted to the alcohol in it. But a lot of it's alcoholics not, who are recovering, they drink non-alcoholic I, beer. Nah. I, I, don't, I don't even think about it. Maybe if I quit and I'll do it. I, I just, nah. If I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit. But, um, but alcohol is number one, man. Are you addicted to chew? Yeah. God, yeah. Big time. I'm addicted to a lot of things, dude. What else are you addicted to? Painkillers. No. I could be addicted to but cocaine. You're not doing painkillers. Yeah, but I'm addicted to it. So you're saying once you're addicted, you're always addicted. Yeah, it's always in your head, dude. It's a demon in you. Okay. Big time. I get that. And if I was doing meth, I'd be addicted to meth, too. Mm-hmm. You know? I have an addictive personality. What it's are you addicted good. to that you're currently... Alcohol. That's it. And yeah. chew. And chew. Yep. Alcohol and chew. You know? And sushi. And and food. You know? Oh, there is a food addiction, Cam. Oh, f- that that's number one. What yeah. am I talking about? It's not even alcohol. Mm-hmm. It's food. You're right. Well, I'm wrong on that. I've watched the shows. Food's number one. Alcohol is number two. Mm-hmm. Then everything else is spread out. You ever see those those shows where they do crazy shit to oh. to themselves? Like they like eat glass. No. Oh my god. No, I don't. Oh. Shoes, shoes, shoes. You have you know those shows I'm talking about, Brody, where it has like a it's it's kind of like one of those like intervention type shows, but it's not really a intervention. Yeah. It's people who have crazy oh, addictions. My yeah, my strange addiction. Oh, yeah. oh dude. really? Yeah. I haven't gotten into They'll that. eat plastic. They'll eat glass. They'll, like eat, they'll eat Tide, tide Pods. Oh, yeah. Like they'll eat, psycho they'll eat foam like cushions. Fucking weirdo. Like a fucking dog. I do watch um, another weird thing that people do is they hoard things. Oh, hoarders. Weirdo. I feel like my wife has a little bit of that. Oh, really? Well, Are you not... stepping over things? Are you stepping <laughs> not over in the like, house. Like these people are fucking nuts. Oh, dude. That's it's, fucking it's gross, sick. man. It's gross. It's a weird thing you got. Mm-hmm. Hoarding. Yeah, hoarding. I think things. every woman's kind of a hoarder. Um, not everybody. I mean, I'm talking like we walk in the house. It's like you're stepping any over Any picture stuff. my kid ever draws, she loves your kid. That's that, that's probably like, what it is. it's like. What are you gonna do with these? You throw them away. Okay, <laughs> she can't do it. You know, like well, you birthday cards. Down. Birthday cards she doesn't throw away. Oh, Dude, you gotta put. Your if I give down. her a birthday card or a card for our anniversary, she'll keep every single one because she loves you. That's not. I think that's just because of love. I don't think that's because, like, she's got a weird tick, you know, where she's like, I got to keep everything. It could be an addiction, a card addiction. 
I think she's addicted to that massage therapist she goes to. You got to worry about okay, that. Okay, that, 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 that is saying. a false rumor. What, what are you talking about? You brought that up the other day. No, I said I about went about the football player. What? I thought you said you got massage, and you're like, that's where my wife goes. No, the big football. I player. went. I'm like, no, 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 Andy. no. I, Come on, I, <laughs> Jesus. I went. I don't even she, want this to go. I, I, <laughs> she gave me. Good God. She had a uh, like a for a very short time. She's had it frozen for a long time. It's at a stretch place. It's not a massage place. Okay. They stretch you. So they're like <laughs> trainers. And I went there. <laughs> they stretch her. They're not massaging her. They're stretching her out. Like, was she playing fucking basketball or something? Like, I'm not going to lie. No, but she's my very wife, active. If my dude. wife's like, I'm going to get stretched out by that football player again, I'd be like, what the okay, fuck? Okay, well, she's are never, she's never about? said that. And she's never, well, what do you, didn't she, where she's, she's going? never been stretched out, I don't think, by the guy who stretched <laughs> me. Yes, she has. So my. Man, Andy, get, get, dude, just open your eyes hold up. What's on. wrong with you? Here's what happened. I, I'm very sore, hip flexors, oh, hamstrings, and she was like, "Listen, I've got all these sessions to get stretched. <laughs> you should, you should go take one. Yeah. They've been frozen. No one's using them. She's tired. They're like twenty minute sessions, dude. Like you're not. It's not a massage. You're you're like fully clothed. You're in a room with like all these other people getting oh, stretched. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. it's like real like trainers yeah. who are doing it. You didn't ever get on the training table? I was a pro athlete, Andy. Okay. That, that well, that's getting stretched. And I, I was a pro athlete. So I had to go get stretched out. <laughs> so it's a stretch place. It's not a massage place. <laughs> no, I mean, you're man. trying to imply that, like... No, you're the one that brought it up, and I'm making fun of you. You brought this up on my radio show. You're like, I got stretched out, Andy. My wife told me to go to this football player because she goes there. I'm like, no, what? No, 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 I go, no, what? No, no, I go, no, I go no, what? No. no. <laughs> That's not what I said. Yes, it is. The person who stretched you me. started it. The person. The dude. I don't know what they identify as. No. The six foot five handsome guy? Yeah, he's no. a dude. No. He was an undersized guard. Oh, he's bigger than you. Offensive guard. Is he better looking than you? No. no. Okay. I'm just saying. You brought it up. I'm just, just saying. Honestly, I didn't even like. It's one of those things where you, you don't even know. What they look like. Of course you don't. Like, your head's she down. Does. And then when you're done, you just, like, leave. You just... <laughs> it's already paid for, because all the sessions, yeah. you know, that have no, been you're good. frozen It's up. all good. Yeah. Just got to stretch out. No big deal. There's nothing wrong with no. that. Hell it's hell actually no. very healthy to do yeah, that. No, I know. Cam, it was very painful. Oh, I know, man. My, my hip... Well, you my, got a lot uh, of muscle. Oh, uh, my hamstrings were very tight. Honey, where you at? Oh, I, I told you. I'm getting stretched out, damn it. Well... Were you there three? I'm still here. That's all. I worked out hard a few days ago. It's all good. You brought it up. I'm just saying. I'm mm. just saying. No big deal. No big deal. Everything's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl Sutter yeah, fired. He got fucking fired. No shit, he did. Well, they needed to fire him. Yeah, I think you're right on that, man. It's a time. It's time. You lost the room. You're calling you. Here, here's like how guys, it works. I don't think the guys can I, like Can him. I say, here's how it works, in how's my it work? opinion. How does it work? The uh, the GM leaves, right? Mm -hmm. So they got the new guy in there. Well, now you start meeting with the players. They have yeah. the exit meetings. You start meeting with the core players. And I guarantee you, to a man, the players are like, this guy's got to go. He's done. He's, yeah. Then you got to convince that. the owner, who's got a great relationship with Daryl. They're very tight. Yeah. Yep. And he's the reason why... He was there to begin with. The owner loves Daryl. Daryl. You know. And I, I'm not going to sit here and say that, like, Johnny Hockey or Matthew Kachuk would have re-signed in Calgary because I think they both wanted to get out of Canada, maybe get to a different destination. But I don't feel like having Daryl Sutter as the coach helped whatsoever. No. I agree. I think both of them were like, fuck, I ain't Fucking even done. considering coming back to play with this guy. Was that a young team? Were the Calgary young? Because I can see where maybe a young team, maybe like you got to get their shit in order, but like uh, Daryl could wear on you, man. And you could just tell in the press conferences too how he just handles things. Yeah, I don't like how I, he handles it. I feel like great he, for I us. feel like he likes more attention than people realize. Like there's a couple times where he added attention that he didn't need. 
and it didn't like that poor kid playing his first ever game, and he like talked shit about it, kind know, of that, that like kind of demeaned stuff. him. Like, what would he do? Let me look at his stats. Oh, uh, no points, no, no goals, point. no assists. Yeah, he was good. Played eleven minutes. Yeah, it was just like a smart ass. The, the kid was probably like Jesus. Like, yeah, I know. I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't I, like when coaches are too hard ass, man. You, there's a balance to everything. Mm-hmm. Be hard, and especially no. Be hard I want to. I want to play for the guy that makes me like miserable. That makes me unhappy. Yeah, no, I don't want to be miserable and like have to hide from the guy so he doesn't. Not say hi to me when right. I walk past them. Let's, like I, that, let's, that's let's play, bullshit. Let's play for the guy who's unhappy. Like, you, hey, Daryl. I know guys are soft now, but like you, you got to have a fucking balance with that. You dude. can't go through life. Can I give a little life advice mm-hmm. to all my people in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Alberta, Manito- Manitoba, even my people in Ottawa, Wisconsin, and I love the people in Ottawa. Just not the nerdy. What? Tweeters. Okay. Well, I mean, they're probably saying the same thing about you. Maybe. I mean, you're doing the same fucking shit. What's the difference between your tweets? They just and their delivered tweets? another Bud Light after the first freaking round. Yeah. It's it's one round. Bud Light too. <laughs> you think they'll get a ring for that? Probably. Players are getting fitted for their rings well, today. Their, parade their today. first round rings. They got to do their parade before they play second round against Matthew. I'm picking Florida, and I like the Leafs team, man. I like yeah. O'Reilly. Yeah, I love Marner. In fact, Ty's getting a Mitch Marner jersey, I think, for his yeah, birthday. He's a right shot. I kind of like Marner. He likes Marner. Yeah, but I'll tell you who's creeping up on on a, on the on the on the, the the rankings though, in terms of which jersey I get. I mean, certainly Zegers because he called Ty and gave yeah. him a Facetime. Yep. But, and he loves Cairo. And I know a lot of people like to shit on Kyrie and whatever, but <laughs> whatever. The guy scores a lot of goals. I don't know. Kids like that, just in case you didn't know. No, I know. You know, they're not like it's not like the high school lunchroom for the kids. They don't they don't know what everybody thinks about everybody. Um Jack Hughes, dude. Hughesy, yeah. He's cool. He's becoming one yep. of my favorite. He's a little players, wheel too, man. man. Is he? Yeah. Well, he looks like one. Hey, uh, if you have a hot sister out there. Oh, can I just say this? No, no, no. If you have a hot sister out there, Ooh. all y'all out there with hot sisters. And she posts a picture on Instagram. You can't like it? With that ass hanging out. Don't like it. Don't like it. What do you do? You ignore it. Your sister is showing her ass off in a thong, and you like it. Don't do that. What if it's your daughter? So it's even worse. And he's probably going to wait. Can't he, If it's your wife who gives a fuck, your daughter or your sister in a thong, and you like it? And everybody sees that you liked it. Like, what the fuck are you thinking? Weird. That's weird. Weird. It's weird. Look at my si- look. My sister's posing. Daryl Sutter. She's posing out. And now I'm gonna. I, I now I feel like Cal Gary. I wonder if Kirky Muller will get any. Uh, I get a new building. Get any. Uh, They're getting a new building. Love as a potential head coaching candidate. He's coming on with us here soon. They're getting a new building. You know who that is, Kirk? Kirk Mo. He's yeah. The, he's the man, dude. Why would I know him? I'm just You just didn't respond to me when I said that. Oh. I thought we already had him on, to be honest with you. <laughs> Seriously. You did? Yeah, I did. Well, we haven't. I, that happens. You We've had we had 290 we, people. We, you thought we had Jordan Tutu on, too. I thought so. And I thought we had Riley Cote. No. No. Riley Cote, what's he doing? Is he doing like... Uh, what do you mean? Uh, nasty Knuckles. Or Nasty Knuckles. Yeah, no, I know that, but he's is he? I saw him like endorsing some type of like st- like uh, mushrooms or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, yeah, yeah. dude. He's like in the business. He's in. He's into that microdosing, microdosing and weed and all that. I love, dude. He, I love Riley Cote. Love him. Awesome dude. Hey, it's Ace. Pat Maroon the other day was like, all of a sudden you had a, hey Patty, it's Ace, and he asked the question. Pat's like, what? I can't. I can't hear you. I saw that. What did you say? <laughs> I saw that. It wasn't that big of a deal. Hey, I like, actually, I like Hanson Carter, man. I love Biz. Okay, okay. I, I love all. I mean, of now Hanson you're Carter. just trying to make me feel like a, you know, feel well, like what a the dick. fuck? I'm I'm the one that chirps him. I'm the one that started that whole. I thing. I started that. Ace. Yeah. Oh God, you are out Cam, of your I'll fucking show you mind. Text chains. You are in La La Land. That have been going on for years and years you're and years. La- you stole it from me, dude. I'm the one that said that. I'm the one that said it off the bat. I'm the yeah, one that said it. Yeah, a lot of people did. Okay, listen, a lot of people did. Crazy. You're not man. the only one, dude. Crazy. 
And we started that thing. Like, hey, it's Ace. Like, a I lot of people. Knows. I don't think anybody knows it. And we talked about it, and it was, became a thing. Yeah. And then you stole it from me. Like, That's you steal true. everything. It's not true. If you tell another one of my jokes. Hey. Hey, it's Ace. Huh? <laughs> It's, what? It's not about. It's Ace. I'm not, what? I'm not being critical of him. It's as, Anson as Carter. A, as an analyst. Oh, hey. It's just he gave himself his own nickname. Yeah, I know. And we talked to some people about it, too. And they're like, no, <laughs> no one called him Ace in the locker room. He called himself that. <laughs> Ace Ventura. Hey, it's Bam Bam here. How you doing? What? It's Bam Bam. Who? What if I just started calling myself Ace? You called yourself Strict Nasty. No, I didn't. You already stole that from Biz anyway. They were calling me that long before I ever even heard of Biz Nasty, before there ever even was one. And I, in B- fact, Biz probably got it from you. You're probably right. Maybe. <laughs> we'll ask him. The guy who nicknamed me that is two people. Ben Boyd is another a kid. I'll give him a shout out. I like him, And this man. kid, Dan, kid. Dan Krie- uh, Kriegshauser, who's an awesome dude. Cool. It worked out. And uh, It worked out for you. They did. Mm-hmm. ODS, Old Dirty Strict, they used to call me back in the yeah. day, too. I bet they did. All the women. Hey, well, dare, a lot of women. I want that fucking dirty strick. I want him. <laughs> Where's that dirty strick at? Oh, God. Where's strick? Where's strick at? Come on. Let's now. go, Leafs. Let's go, Leafs. Come on, Devils. Let's go, Devils. That game's tonight. Let's go, Devils. So, as we're recording, we don't know who's going to advance. Yeah, we don't know. Who's going to win that game, game though? Game seven, baby. Who's That's winning that game? You picked the Rangers. You sticking with that? Mm. I think the Rangers might win this one. Really? Yeah, I just, I do. I hope the Devils do. I like to go up there for a game. Hey, this uh, goaltender for Jersey, Schmid Akira Schmid. I talked to his junior coach. His junior coach Luke Strand was his coach in uh, Sioux City in the USHL, and he's now head coach of uh, Minnesota State Mankato. Mm-hmm. You betcha. You betcha, there, eh? <laughs> and How are you? He's like this kid. You know, like you know, he got like. He was playing the Lethbridge in the WHL, and they had too many imports, so they had to release his ass. He had nowhere to go. Oh, yeah. Ends up in Omaha in the USHL. They trade for him. Then he needs, like, double hip surgery. He had, like, double hip surgery, like, two years ago. He's playing in the USHL, like, two years ago. That's why I tell everyone goaltending is the most difficult predi- position to predict in all of sports, man. If you, to if predict? You, if, yeah. yeah. Like, you just never know, like, like... the most difficult position. No, like, to predict, like... Gotta be. like all these guys, you get to that level, they're all capable of having a great game, dude. Yeah, no doubt. Look, there's a lot of good Can you do it over a long, yeah, long period consistent? of time? Yeah. Under pressure. And that's where the best separate themselves from the other. Let me write this down real quick. So say that again. So a goaltending goal is the most okay. difficult position in all the sports to predict. Okay. And what like else? one guy may be great one year and then struggle the next year. Yeah, I know. I know that, man. I think a lot of people know that. Now, yeah. there's a handful of guys that are great every year. Olmark was great this year, fucking terrible in the playoffs, and he might be terrible again next year. Hey, I hate to say this, because especially if Bergeron retires and uh, Marshan walks away and he retires, he leaves again, and uh, it's been a great run for uh, Patrice Bergeron. Listen, I, the Bruins fans, I, I, I wish you had that second Stanley Cup just to solidify no them. Doubt. Because Bergeron and Marshan were so young when they won in 2011. I would have liked to see them win as the true, like, head of the class, head of the snake, you know? Yeah. And, you know, in 2011, you know, it was Timmy Thomas. It was all these other dudes. Fuck them. I don't give and a then fuck. And then, they, you know, they got to a final, though. I will say that. I like Trent Frederick. So, man. they got to a final. They lost to St. Louis, obviously. But um, I, I feel like Boston is going to be in a situation kind of like St. Louis, in the next year or two, right. where they're going to be in retool mode, Bergy, Critchy. trying to figure out, okay, where are we going now as an organization to get ourselves back at the level where they are right now? It's difficult to How sustain. Taylor Hall play? Very, very good. First couple of games. I mean, he was a little quiet the last oh. couple of games, but he had a great, I mean, a really strong first four or five games of the series. Yeah, I don't give a fuck, man. But he's a They've guy, he's a classic example yeah. of a guy who has never really been an, an elite superstar, shouldn't have won the MVP that year, and that wouldn't was... have if Nathan McKinnon didn't get hurt, and then yeah. it kind of paved the way for him to win the heart. But Taylor Hall is best suited to be in a situation where he can just kind of slide in, fit in, be a secondary player, not have the pressure of trying to lead a team 
and to have that that superstar label on him that he could never really truly reach. He's never been a superstar. I didn't feel like he had great hockey sense early in his career, to be honest with you. I just felt like he was a little bit overrated as a superstar. But once you get into a team with other superstars and you just slide in and you're like a secondary piece, a dude. you're a good player. Yeah, I get that, man. I don't, I don't care about Boston. They've won enough shit. It's all good, you know. Um, I'm rooting for Matt, Matthew now and, and the Devils. Come on, Matthew. Come on, Matthew. Bring the fucking heat, man. Like, let's go. Make their life anything. miserable. Be a miserable player. I like that Paul Maurice, too. I do, too. I like him a lot, man. I like when coaches pump up their team like that. And I know I just like his style. Like, he seems cool as he's shit. And we're trying to get him on. Oh, uh, I've talked to him several times. Dude, we'll do it after the season. Yeah, and when he's done, let's get his ass yeah. on. He seems like a – and we've heard a lot of people talk about him and how much they liked him as oh, a coach. Oh, yeah, and too. Jamie Compon is on the staff. He's yeah, a very Jamie good buddy. Too. I see him, man. They went crazy yeah. the other night. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. I love Jamie, dude. Yeah. He can still play right now. I've known Jamie for a long time. Fucking Jamie could play hockey. He'll tell you how good I was back in the day, too. No, he won't. Yes, he will. Nobody that you've ever said that about, they, they're all like, what is he talking about? We used to play back in my... Oh, Chaser said I was the most skilled player to ever come out of St. Louis when he saw me. Back when he was still playing. So let's get to uh, OB, or Shane as you call him. The Shane dog. The Shane company. Yeah. That's a St. Louis thing, I think. No, it's not. It's not? It's worldwide? Or uh, nationwide? Nationwide. Shane company? All right. Do you wish you would (laughs) have... You wish you would have played for, like, the Ducks? Um, and settled down care. out there? No, in California, no. I couldn't afford that, even if I played there. You know? You should have negotiated. I, I, I like my... I like I, my, I, I like your agent. I got to know your agent very, very Scotty. well, actually. Norm. Yeah, I used yeah, to meet him for bre- awesome. breakfast and stuff like that. His son's a baseball player, I think. Yeah. Hey, he's a good dude. I liked him. I shouldn't have um, him. Oh, really? You regret that? Yeah. I told you that, 100%. The guy You're, did everything for me since I was 13 Why years would old. you do that? Embar- oh, because he embarrassed you in front yeah, of Yeah, I don't want to even talk about it, but yeah. And I, and I got pressure from other people, too. Mm-hmm. Well, and he, it's stupid. I he been should like, have negotiated a longer-term you, you contract you for you with, for more money. Whatever, dude. I, I, that's what I was getting. But like, uh, Shane O'Brien's getting $2 million bucks a year, dude. He's better than me. He's a better player than me. Uh, he's a good defenseman. He's a good skater. Mm-hmm. I was one-dimensional. What were you? What was that dimension? Tough? K- killing guys. I hit and I fought. Yeah, that's two no, dimensions. No, that's, no, three. That's, I'm a three dimensional. Not dude. everybody who, who hits can fight. Well, I wouldn't play in the NHL if I wasn't a hitter, so that's why. But Scott was good to me, man, and I should never listen to anybody else but you, your own fucking mind, dude. And I, what'd your mom and dad say? Oh, they were like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Oh, really? Yes. Oh, they were pissed. Fuck yeah, but they don't know. So yeah, they but, had to but listen to me. Ben Bishop did the same thing because he got pressure too. I'm like, I look at it like, why the fuck? Dustin I, Brown did the same thing. I should have just kept him. Dustin Brown yeah, but those guys are in different started situations. negotiating his own contracts. Yeah, well, so did Mike Rupp and those guys too. But Mike Rupp know. negotiated his own deal? Yeah. Yep, he did. Ask him. I think we did ask him that. He was great when he came yeah, up. He awesome. I like Rupper. He's given good analysis on Twitter yeah. too. Yeah, Ruppy's awesome. Awesome guy. I loved him. Great teammate, man. Cam, the Cam and Strick podcast is brought to you by Hair Club and HairClub.com. People love that video I put out there of you. You couldn't figure out how to put your damn mic in. Well, I'm gonna. No wonder you. you ca- no that. wonder you can't get Kate pregnant. If you want to, because my sperm sucks. You can't get. No, you, you can't get it in. I beat that up. Trust me. Can't get it but, in. But uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna send a picture. I'm gonna do a video of you when you're not looking. I'm gonna post it. See if you like it. Oh, did you not like that? I don't give a. F- it's all good. I didn't do anything stupid. You know who loved it? Who? Kate. Yeah, of course. How'd you know that? I didn't. She know. slid into my DMs. Oh, I bet. I bet she did. Was she asking where that six foot foot, six foot four fucking football player was going to stretch her out? He wasn't six four. I, 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 <laughs> Undersized guard yeah. who played Division three football. Is He's from right Kentucky. Is she there right now? No, she hasn't been there in months. Uh, oh yeah. I have three more sessions. I'm going to go back though because I have my hamstring injuries. You don't get to choose who you don't know what you're getting until you get there. Mm-hmm. It's like a surprise box. Oh, you know what you're getting. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. If you're a female, you do. It's a chain. It's like one of those places, dude. They have them all over. Oh, yeah. You don't ever go to like a physical yeah. therapy no, type you're place? Right, man. No, you're good. It's all good. If she says, don't worry about the guy, don't worry about him. It usually works out. The guy she tells you not to worry about. <laughs> It's all good, man. It's all good. 
six foot four. Handsome she's listening shit. to this too. Handsome as fuck. Oh, she jacked. Might. He's jacked. No, he's not. Stretched, getting stretched out in her Lulu pants. <laughs> Come on, it's a nightmare. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nightmare. <laughs> it's a nightmare. God, Dude, what's wrong with why? you? Put your foot down. Good job. <laughs> Oh my god! Why? Stop! Your maturity stop. level is just you not where stop. it needs to be you right gotta now. Figure things out. Hair club and hairclub.com for men and women of all origins. Cam, yeah, hell yeah. When in doubt, have that pill. Yeah, they got a pill. And have it nearby. Damn right. You get the artist. Cam's got an appointment coming up very very soon. Friday. Hair club and hairclub.com. Cam, get that pill. That's the easiest way to go about it, man. A, a, a healthy flowing hair will give you what. Confidence, baby. There you go, baby. No doubt. That's exactly it. You yep. had the right answer. I thought you were going to prolong that one. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, it can give you a lot of things. Yeah. No, it's yeah. confidence, man. Confidence, man. No doubt. Confidence gives you what? Gives you pussy. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> that's not. No, it gives you like what? success. Success, yeah. Well, you can that. walk in. You can get that job. That's right. Yeah. Hair club and hairclub.com. Uh, use that promo code. Actually, just go to our landing page, which is hairclub.com slash cam and strict. Go there today. And find out what Hair Club can do for you. Over 1,200 locations. Uh, they are throughout Canada as well. If you're listening in the Toronto area, Montreal area, uh, I believe Calgary as well. If you can find a Hair Club location near you. They are all over the United States. Uh, go in there, get that consultation, and uh, use our, our landing page. You're going to get hundreds of dollars off your free consultation. Damn right, baby. So Check do that out. and do it today. Check it out. Oh, of course, our friends over there at First Form. We talked to First Form Nick the other day, Cam. Yeah. They are planning that summer smash. Yeah, man. That's going to be a hell of a party. Yeah. They do some cool parties. Yeah. We got invited to it, too. Yes, nice. we did. Yeah. I did. Did you get invited? Um, I think he invited me. Yeah, okay, good. I think he's going to invite the, uh, you know, the hockey player. The shit kickers? The, you know. I think they like that. I'm partying that night, Cam. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> No, we'll have some fun uh, for sure, man. First form, uh, see what they can do to impact your life. The best customer service, the best oh, people. The best. That app is truly unbelievable. Get that app and get it today. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. That is the link that you need to use whatever you're looking to get, which could be supplements. It could be bars. could be the energy drink. It could be the incredible apparel that they have, oh. hats, hoodies, T-shirts, shorts. What am I wearing right now? All day, every day. Do you use do you go with the nine inch inseam for the shorts or the seven inch? Uh, oh, um, the, the the seven inch is in because my quads are getting fucking jacked up right Quadzilla. now. Quadzilla, yeah. So I got so like the mine. seven inch. Yeah, I like the seven inch. Um, but mm -hmm. but the nine is better for like walking around doing shit. Seven's like fucking showing off the fucking quads after you get done working. Okay, out, me so, too. You know. Yeah. I, pre I, I agree with that. Yeah. But listen, man, in all seriousness, firstform.com slash cam and strength. That is our link. It's important to use you our You got to help us with that, guys. Like, seriously. Like, I know you want to look at the stuff, but, like, do go through that process to keep this thing rolling. They see all that stuff, man. I know you guys always take care of the sponsors. We love all you guys for mm -hmm. that, man. And you know the spot. We have awesome sponsors, and they, they actually help you. They are the best. So you could help us by going through that process, yeah. going through the app. No question. And, um... It, it just tracks everything, man. You, you you know how the game works. Oh, yeah. But they're the real deal. They're the best of the best. I'm telling the you. The best of the they'll best. They'll educate you on so many different fucking things. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Get that app for nutrition, for working out, for all of that. Life coach, you can get it yeah, all. Man. Bellman and Bellman.com, Cam. At Bellman, you get no what? Swing my fucking dick. Okay. Out there in Troy, Missouri. Troy. Okay. Where's it at? Troy. Say hi to Danny boy. Hey, Danny. And uh, Dale. Dave. How you doing, Dave? What about Kenny? Is that Kenny? God damn. They got the Is that uh, fucking Kenny? Buick GMC on one side of the street, Cam. On the other side, they got the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Yeah, man. They got options. They got options for all seasons and for all different types of people, Cam. You can send your wife there by herself, your girlfriend, whatever it is, and have no fear, man. There's no... Uh, oh. Fucking there's no coming well, there's you. no hey, there's no football players. No there. football, six foot four football players want to stretch your wife out <laughs> three times a week because she's working hard. Get out of here! I'm going to see him again. Like what? <laughs> well, I uh, I was walking down the steps the other day and I just I don't know I, my my hamstring. Like, oh, okay. My hamstring. Put your foot down, dude. You better put your foot there's down. No, it's a it's a it national of, chain. Before it gets out of control, it's a national chain. Put it down before it gets out of control. That's all. But Let Bellman, 
Um, they'll get you some AI sushi too, probably while you're there. Stupid thing to say. A whole tray oh, of they'll, it. They'll, they'll hey, a good did you eat the leftover sushi? Yes. I was wondering if you did. Oh, I I just I had a, a couple sushi. I didn't eat the rice. I just took the like the little tuna off the fucking rice and I ate it. What? Oh, yeah, why is the rice bad for you? No, I just wasn't. Dude, I ate so much the night before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just could. I told you I woke up and you should have put that in your eggs. Yeah. Oh, it had nothing to do with the alcohol. I mean, oh, it's a mixture of everything. Yeah, it had nothing to do with that. No, I don't. Oh, the up. sushi made me puke. No, it did. Oh, uh, the sushi made me sick. No, I don't get sick. Off it of had it. nothing to do with the drinking all day and night. When you're it's not, the sushi. When you're an alcoholic, okay. you don't puke off of booze anymore, dude. Okay. You puke off of the hey, shit when you, that you ate when you're golfing. drinking booze. When are we going golfing? Tomorrow, maybe? I went yesterday. I went two days before that. Yeah, we're going to go this week. That. I need to get out there I was going to invite you, but I didn't want to. It's just annoying inviting you. No, just invite me during the it's week. Weekends are hard. Because Andy's going to be like, well, I can't. Here. Okay. Here's the deal. I'll come out, but I can only stay for an hour and a half. Okay. And I need this. And Ty's going to come with me. And then uh, I got to take Lori there. And I got to do this. So I got to. Like, no, no, no. No, you're not coming then. Like, you're just annoying. Like, I want to invite you to things, but it's like, I, well, I got this. Well, can we do this? Like, no. Can you take a helicopter and fly me out? No, I can't. Mm. So, therefore, I didn't invite you because you're kind of a hassle. That's bullshit. Well, you did it. That's bullshit, man. You did it. I'll fucking invite you, Brody. Yeah, is, is he snor- Brody will- Is he snuffling? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Brody's I thought he was a- laughing, but Brody he's just doesn't, snorting He doesn't even look here. at booze. He's like my Tibetan shepherd. Andy, every time I come in here, Brody's like hawking up something. And he's sniffling <sighs> like he's doing blow all night oh my long. God. He doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. Like he sick eats all healthy time. things. And he's just sniffling. Mother- sick. You're a sniffling motherfucker. We love you. I worry about you. Go to Bellman and Bellman.com and go there today, Cam. I will. Out there in Troy. Troy. Get yourself some new wheels. Uh, Sparks and Sparks.com. Uh, take your skate sharpening in your game in your own hands. That's what I would tell people. Use that promo code Cam and Strick. It's going to save you more money than you'll save on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. That's how good the deals are. Uh, incredible deals. Sparks Cam is S-P-A-R-X. Sparks.com is the website. Again, the common denominator with all our sponsors is the customer service you get. They have great customer service. If you don't get your own Sparks, you go to the hockey shop. Who are you dealing with? Oh, God. Oh, Seth. It smells like shit. <laughs> Has a change of shirt in two days. Oh, my God. He's creeping out your fucking neighbor's daughter, just so you know. Mm-hmm. He might even be working at the scratch you, you place really, on the side. If you see, like, a, a figure in the fucking window at night, that's fucking Seth. Oh, uh. Playing with himself, staring at oh him. I'm just telling you. No, I don't know. No, no, no. If he to I'm go just that telling you. With it. I'm just telling. But he's you. working at the hockey shop. Yeah, and he's doing weird things. Hey, this kid on my on Ty's roller hockey team this past weekend, first couple games, like ah, oh, my skates are all messed up. He took him to the hockey shop to have the guy put the wheels on. He put him he put the wrong wheels in the wrong spot because he's stupid. And I go, that's why you don't have Seth do it. He's like, who's Seth? This other guy at the table is like, you don't know about Seth. That's why you get a Sparks. <laughs> so he knew. Seth and- is like the, the high school kid that's getting older. That's a dipshit. Mm-hmm. He's got his license, but he still picks up the middle school girls and takes them to parties. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Creepo motherfucker. Hey, listen, you want to avoid Seth at all costs, man. Yeah, no shit. So get yourself a Sparks and get one today. S-P-A-R-X, baby. Sparks and Sparks.com. Let's get to Shane O'Brien. Great guy, man. OB, longtime NHL veteran, now doing his thing in the media world as well, and he joined us now on the Cam Strick Podcast, baby. Hairclub.com, baby. Oh, you're damn right. Go to our landing page today, hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. Regrow, restore, and replace that hair. Don't wait. Now to the interview. Oh, hi, Obey. Shane. Hi, Shane. Hey, boys. <laughs> what up? How are you doing? What kind of coffee are you getting this morning? Uh, buddy, I got the little uh, iced coffee with almond milk, trying to stay light. Almond yeah, milk. Baby. You know, I was reading it. Apparently, uh, oat milk, coconut milk is the healthiest milk to get. Cam wouldn't know that. Cam's like whole milk guy, like straight out of the like the uh, the udder. Is that what I drink right it? out of the goddamn cow, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do, Jenny and Beauty. I know you do. I'm drinking beer right now, I'll tell you that. <laughs> are, you, are you on the okay, beach yeah, right yeah. now or what? Yeah, what are you I'm, doing? Uh, I live yeah, in Newport Beach. Uh, I've been out here since I was, actually, I moved out here, Jenny, probably when I was like 25 or 26. I just kind of never left. So, uh, I'm, I'm out here, up dogs out here. Our studio's 10 minutes away. So it's a pretty good setup for us. Oh yeah, dude. 
10 minutes away. You're on the water. Expensive as fuck, though, right? I mean, everything. Everything's expensive. As, uh, yeah, that's that's the worst part about it. So I actually sold my house uh, last April, and I got lucky. My buddy owns this place called – one of my golf buddies owns this place called the Bubble Bay Club. So he gave me a little bro deal, Jenny. I moved in here, and I'm, let, let's just say I'm not in a hurry to leave, buddy, because I got a pretty good deal going on. Oh, yeah. Man. Hey, who's all over there? Like in Newport, is there like a whole collection of guys? Yeah. Like who's living there? Is it more like Kings players, Ducks players? Like who's who's hanging out in uh, in Newport? Yeah, so it's more, more mainly Ducks guys. So the Kings guys, they got, they got a great setup too. The Kings guys like Stoli Babe and all those guys, they live in uh, Hermosa Beach and Manhattan Beach, which is like 10 minutes from their practice rink, which is El Segundo by LAX. So they got a pretty good setup there. Down here, it's all Ducks guys. So um, we actually did our first annual – uh, Ducks alumni golf tournament. So like Brian Allen, Kevin BX, uh, myself, Getzlav. Well, Getzy's moving to Tennessee. Um, oh yeah, he's moving. David oh, Carpa, yeah. Solani. Yeah, Getzlav's out of here. He's had enough of this. Uh, the way the the way that California works, he's had enough. Yeah, I get that, man. No, everybody's going down to Nashville too. Yeah, they are. A lot of people are moving to Nashville, man. It is what it is. Yeah, so it's good. I I, I know the I know the Blues have one of the best alumni in the league. So. Um, Chris Loomis, the guy out here, has been doing a good job with, with the Ducks when we're trying to get it going. There you go, man. So, like, did you live – was that, like, always your off-season spot, like, going back to California? Like, like when did you, like, end up, you know, settling down there? Yeah, so, you know, obviously I was drafted by the Ducks. I came out here. i never obviously been to California. Uh, fuck, I've never been anywhere. So, I saw California. I'm like, this is nice. And, uh, you know, made the team and then went back home. And I come from a uh, really small town in Ontario and um, – it just got to be too much for me, right? Like, it was just like, I need a change of pace. And the loops is out here, and, and, and Alpi was thinking about moving out here. And uh, the weather's perfect. You know, nobody really gives a lot. No one really cares about hockey. So it was just a good fit to go. It, j- it just sucked because it was so far from my hometown. But uh, that's the reason I came out here, just training, golf, and, and good weather, basically. And, and good-looking girls. I'm not oh, gonna lie. oh. Yeah, yeah. Jenny, look, California dreamboat's out here, Jenny. Man, I'm too ugly for California, homie. No, you're no, not. I no, I am. I'm a mutant no, now. Not. Those girls are looked down upon me and shun me away. <laughs> like, what do you do? I'm, what do you get out here, peasant? I'm talking about in your prime when you come out with no shirt on, oh, yeah. you just jacked up. You would have been at Lupo's Beach House, dude. You would have been right there doing some damage. Well, that's stuff. a different story. That's a different story. <laughs> I'm obese now, man. It is what it is. God, I'm aging so goddamn fast. It's, cr- it's crazy. Hey, so how, listen, how often are you working? Like, are you able to chill and have fun, like, enjoy life? Like, are you busy? I, I hear you doing the radio stuff, too, man. Yeah, so, like, what's your schedule yeah. like? You know what? Yeah, Strix, I, I do it with, with Cooley, so I keeps me on my toes you know what i mean i gotta i gotta watch every goddamn game he's like did you see the face-off play between columbus and carolina you're like, like no oh, i cool. didn't no i'm cool <laughs> i missed that one i was i was flipping the chicken on the barbecue i missed that fucking face-off play they did so um can we swear on this or should i keep the oh yeah. Fuck yeah all right yeah, yeah baby jenny uh to answer your question and, and Jenny would appreciate this if i worked as hard as i did now when i played in the show i probably wouldn't have to work right if i wasn't such a you know, mixing up and partying, but I, I'm pretty busy, a little bit too busy to be honest with you, Strix, but it is what it is, and uh, I enjoy it for the most part. Sometimes watching hockey, I'll be honest with you, boys, it's painful. Jenny, I know. I know. it's so soft out there, bro, that I'm, I mean, these playoffs, I don't know, I'm not old crusty dinosaur, Jenny, I don't care, I'm, I'm never going to change, bud. I, dude, I, you and many others, too, and I think these playoffs have been, at least there's a lot of drama and shit, there's shit going on, you know what I mean? They're not necessarily killing each other, but some games are different than others, but, but you talk about like working hard now, like so, like is it is it different for you? Like so, when you were playing, were you just like, like the workouts? You didn't want to work out because we all partied, but what you we just kind of were lazy. What are you saying? <laughs> no, I mean I, obviously you know to play in the NHL for you know ten years, or whatever I did. I, you know as well as anyone, Jenny, you you're in great shape. You got to be in good shape. It wasn't it wasn't working out. It wasn't uh, any of that stuff. It's you know, I'm half joking, but I, I enjoyed the game, Jenny. Like, I, I, I wasn't one of those guys that was coming in and watching video or, you know, if things weren't going my way, I was just going to sit in my apartment or house and, and, and let, you know, I, I played the game because I enjoyed the finer things, right? I, I enjoyed that I could go out after it. Yeah, there was lots of girls around. And, yeah, I could go on sick trips. Like, for me, hockey motivated me for the lifestyle. So, um, yep. 
But no, when it came to working out, you know as well as anyone. I mean, there was no cut corners. Can't. Hey, at least you admit it. Yeah, I know. Because you know what? I, I like it. Like, you can tell who the guys are that are playing for the lifestyle, and you can tell who the hockey nerds are who yep. just who love the game right. so much they can't get away from the rink. So I like the fact that you admit it, man. You're just like, listen, I love the lifestyle. So you just you played hockey because of it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't love. I mean, listen, I love and, and much like Janie. I mean, I love going to the room with the boys. Yeah, I love the feeling of a big win, getting on the plane. But I didn't love the game enough to, to sit in my condo and watch film and, and not go out and not you know be a single guy, not trying to meet some girls. Like I just didn't love it enough like that. Now, Janie, my lifestyle now, buddy, I would have been the best pro in the world, dude. I'm in bed at ten o'clock. Yeah. I'm up at eight. Me I don't too. drink during the week. I just, I just, I, that's the way I am now. But when I was younger, much like yourself, we were, we were, we were a little bit different, right? The way we, we I wanted different. women. They were from yeah. fucking small towns, dude. You, <laughs> yeah. you know, you go to juniors, you get a little bit of uh, attention, and you're in the paper, and people are cheering for you, and you're like, God, this is great. I want to, I want to do well. So you're right. We could live this lifestyle. And you go to high school, and the girls are talking to you. You're like, fuck yeah. You know, I get <laughs> exactly. it, man. But I'm not a hockey exactly. nerd. I'd even pay attention when I played. Dude, when I retired, like, getting in the radio, like, I didn't watch any sports. I was paying attention to myself the whole time. So I'm with you, man. Like, I'm not a hockey nerd. I like the guys. I like playing it and, you know, the afterwards and just, like, walking into a room. You're the hockey guy. Like, I, I love that feeling. Yeah, exactly. And, and you guys obviously being in, the, in St. Louis, like, you guys, you know, you, you got the St. Louis Blues team, right? That's the one thing about missing Kirk, you like – we love doing it, but like we don't do anything with the ducks out here or whatever. So it, it may be different when you can like surround yourself with a team like you guys are doing with the blues. Cause I do miss that feeling of, of having a team. And now it's whoever I got my money on. Like yesterday was a tough day for me, boys. Like the Bruins losing and the abs losing, uh, Jenny. <laughs> that one stung. That one stung, fell. That one stung. That's crazy. The Bruins. The Bruins. Damn. They look so fucking nervous, Shane. Like, I mean, they were just like, like, what was wrong with those guys? Like, like settle down. They got like all these hall of famers and you did listen, you knew they were going to lose that game for whatever reason. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I don't know about early in the game, but at least once they got to overtime, you just felt like a, a Florida goal coming. I mean, yeah, you're right. Strict. Like I, I felt like halfway through the first I'm sitting here and this is when, you know, you're a degenerate gambler boys. And I guess Jay, this is why coaches like when coaches in the first period, you losing your mind and you're like, Settle down. Like, we're fine here. <laughs> I think they sensed something coming, right? So as a gambler now, and I got to put money on the game. I don't put a whole lot on boys, but I have to have some money on it just to watch it and keep my interest yeah, in it. Because like yeah. I said, some nights it's pretty bad. But, yeah, they looked nervous. Uh, I thought McAvoy was horrendous. I thought Lindholm was horrendous. Uh, yeah, they were nervous for whatever reason. But they're, when, when you're not going tape to tape, uh, that's when I think there's reason for concern. And they were just missing passes. Marshawn was – Looked like me out there. It wasn't perfect. No. <laughs> Don't he, win the president he, trophy. Marsha, Marshawn, no. so he's supposed to be what Matthew Kachuk is, know. you know, You're just right, like right. dominate every shift right. and, you know, make people miserable. I had a player tell me today, he's like, this McAvoy is the most overrated defenseman in the game. I'm like, I don't know about that, man. Dude, he's, he crushes he's, guys. He's pretty good. Yeah. But he didn't play yeah. well, to your point. No, I mean he's lucky. Guy. He's like he's like he's like he's lucky. His nurse is making nine bananas because nurse is probably the most overrated guy. Although, oh fuck, um, McAvoy last night was yeah he looked nervous like Jenny said. But you want to talk about Matty Kachuk and I, I'm sure you guys know him from the Lou and his brother Brady and his big bad waltz of beauty. But Matty, like, are you kidding me? Like what he's doing out there, like it's unbelievable. Yeah, dude, he runs the game, man. Like he's yeah, the sk- he's the hardest guy in the league to play against, probably. Like, seriously, overall, especially in the playoffs now, Connor McDavid, like, you know, I got to throw him in the mix, obviously, and a couple other guys. But Matthew is a force to be reckoned with. He's fucking mean. It's because nobody he, else plays that dude, way. He's dude, he's so big. He, every time he gets the puck, something happens. Like, something yeah. always happens, dude. He's a fucking freak, man. Good for them. Don't win the President's Trophy. I'm, yeah. I'm with you, Jay. The President's Trophy is, I mean, we were never that close. I mean, in Vancouver, I think we were sniffing at it one year. I'm yeah. like, boys, there's no need for us to win this fucking thing. Like, let's just maybe, you know. Maybe throw me on the power player for a game. Let's 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 not win the president's trophy. <laughs> or maybe like lose some games and crawl out of a hole because they never had that feeling. Yeah, I'm with you. Like there was no adversity at all for them really. And Jenny, to be up three times in the third period. Yeah. I know a new NHL and all this, but come on, boys, you gotta lock that down in my opinion. Well, fuck Tampa Bay. Jesus. Tampa man. too. Yeah. I mean I know. I am so pissed. Are you are you a Leaf <laughs> are you a Leafs fan, OB? Is like is it was that your team growing up? It was my team growing up. I, I loved him back in the day. Dougie G. We had we had Dougie G on the pod, boys, and I was I was nervous. Like he was my favorite player growing up. Him and Wendell Clark. But you know what, Strick? Like 
I, I, I don't think they deserve to win that series. I love Ryan O'Reilly. Don't get me wrong. The fact that he going there has been a big improvement for me cheering for them. But there's still something about him to me that like, they're just soft. And it's just hard for me to get behind them. Yeah. And they didn't deserve to win that series, but no. they did. And I would say now, fellas, maybe look out for them, right? Like, Jay and the monkey off their back. Like, how good are they doing in the room right now, Jay? They're like, they're fucking on. champagne. They're smoking cigars, <laughs> crushing champagne. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, know. Exactly. All the media is like, they're bringing more beer into the fucking lot. I'm like, well, did they just win the Bud cup? Light. Bud Light too. <laughs> I'm like, it's the oh, first no. round, boys. Settle Not down. <laughs> hey, what do you think of Kyle Dubas? Little Doobie up there. We And look, we give them a hard time because it's easy. It's easy to do. And, and, and I feel for that fan base, man. People think that fan base is obnoxious, and, and, and rightfully so. They're loud. It's a mecca. But they've been through some shit, man. But it's funny when you see different GMs, how they handle different stuff. And I just feel like he's just kind of like... I don't know. No, he's yelling fuck. at the yeah, fucking no, fans. fans. He's, like, he's calm yeah. down. Fist pumping, high fiving guys. Up. Like Spezza and Shanahan yes. are just like sitting there, yes. like completely composed yeah. and chilling out inside. And he's like going crazy. We call him Little Doobie. It's a terrible look for Little Doobie Doobie Doo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is. In game two, when they when he when he like got excited and patted Spezza on the back, I'm like, easy fella. Like you're supposed to win this game. You guys already pissed away game <laughs> one, and then I don't know, like. I respect what he did the deadline. Like, we, we talked about Ryan O'Reilly. I love that kid like his brother. And then he goes out and makes all these trades to try to get tougher. And I, I'm like, okay, cool. This guy's at least laying his balls on the line. But yeah. if you're a DM, like, if I, if I was ever in that position, which I never would be, but I would just be like, what would Steve Eisenman do, right? Would Steve Eisenman be yelling at the fucking drunk guys in the, in the 300 no. section of Tampa? <laughs> Probably not. But, no. uh, I mean, he, he was obviously feeling the heat, boys. Oh, oh yeah. Well, fuck. Lou, Lou Lamarillo. Fucking Doug Armstrong. Lou. None, none of those guys. Jay, what's what? Jay, what's crazy. Jay Lou? What's the Godfather all about, Jay? He, he must have loved you. I know Sheldon Brookbank he loved, but what is the Godfather all about, dude? Like, just say so you say he's a Godfather, man. He stares yeah. into your soul, Shane. He <laughs> looks at you. He knows what you did the night before. He could he smell does, you. He? He's got this <laughs> weird thing, man. Like he, just, I would always get there first. And make sure he saw me because he was the first guy there too. And I'm like, hi, I'm here. I'm taping my stick. I'm stretching. And he would look into my soul, Shane. And he'd do the same thing to you. And he's like, I know you're demons. So it, it was it was scary. I needed that, man. Fuck. I, you probably needed the same shit. I needed a guy yeah. that I'm fucking scared of that I know I, if I go home with my tail between my legs, my mom and dad are going to be fucking pissed. I got nothing else going on. I need to get my shit together. And he certainly helped me with that, man. So, But it was hardcore. Yeah. Dude, I swallowed so much chew. Tay in a chew in a fucking locker room. He walks in, go go. And then you have heartburn for like 48 hours. But I loved him, man. I truly did. Yeah, yeah. Shallow Brookbank says the same thing. And I, and I had John Tortorella when I was young. And, and you talk about keeping you on your toes. I mean, Torts kept me on my toes every single day. Yeah. And he would look at me too. Like, and, and Torts, and, and you know what? We talk about Booze and Jenny, but like, you don't have that much time through the course of the season to go out, right? You get one night a week maybe where you can go out and really let it loose. Other than that, I'm playing every other day. But, uh, Torts didn't mind the partying aspect of it, but he just, you got to be a good pro. And he would look at me and kind of same thing that you're saying, like, keep you on your toes. <laughs> you like Torts, like, even, like, you look back at it. And, like, even if you're a player right now, like, would you want to play for that for that type of coach? You know, like, everyone always says what a great guy he is. Yeah, yeah. Like, they swear yeah. by him. Like, they're like, he's an unbelievable guy. Like, I'm watching a video of you jabbing, like, Sean Avery with your fucking stick, and he, he's going berserk on the bench. Was he yelling at yeah. you on that play or no? I don't know. Well, he was yelling at everyone. The best – to answer your first question, I love John Tortorella. And – it's like a love hate, right? Like I would literally get in fuck you matches with him in his office, but he loved that shit. Like if one thing about Torch is like if he comes at you, he wants you to go back at him. Like if you just put your head down and take it, he'll be like, This guy's, you know, whatever. He he wants some confrontation and he, he's always calculated. So I love playing for Torch. He made me a better man and a better player. But the best was in Vancouver. I hated Bob Hartley more than anyone, boys. Like if, if Bob Hartley was walking down the street in Newport, I would probably go up to him and, and I'd probably I'd probably try to fight him and I wouldn't I would take worry about the consequences later. So I've heard you say that. Cool? Like why why do you why do you, why why do you hate Hartley so much? I just hate him like you know, he just made it personal. Like he never even gave me an opportunity. Like I came into Calgary and they traded a big trade in the offseason. I come in there the last exhibition game he plays me six minutes. I'm coming in every day to do my workouts. Um he just never gave me a chance. And then he made it personal. To me, if you don't like me as a hockey player, fine. That's your job as a GM or coach. But when you just attack me as a person, that to me, when he made it personal to me, so I just, I fucking hated him and I still do. But uh, the brawl, the brawl between Vancouver and Calgary, which 
to this day, I still think it's a Bush League move by Hartley and the Flames, but he didn't put me out there. That's how much he hated me, Gianni. He put out oh, Ladislav Schmid oh, and Chris God. Butler. I'm like, are you kidding me? Butler and Ladislav Schmid? <laughs> so anyways, Torts, Torts is yelled at Hartley. He's like, Obi, how do you play for this fucking guy? I'm like, I hate playing for him, Torts. I don't even want to. I, was, I, I wish I was on your bench. He's like, you tell that fucker I'm coming for him in intermission. I'm like, okay, sure. And sure enough, down the and if it wasn't for Big Earn boys, yep. I would have had a front row seat for Hartley Portarella in the visiting locker room of Vancouver. I wasn't gonna break it up. Hell no. I wanna see that. No, no I remember so, that. I, I, remember I remember that, that whole too. situation going going down. I think St. Louis just came into town right after that. And I remember like standing out there talking to the ushers, like you know, about everything that had taken place, like security, you know, they were like breaking down the whole situation. In the video, like you're right there, man. Like so, but you're playing for Calgary though, right? You're not playing for Vancouver at at that no, time. No, I'm playing. I'm playing for Calgary. So they kick our four D out, and then Zach Cassian, who I kind of become friends with Cass after, but so we get four D, and and I forget our D man's name, a little French fucker who was painful too, and he's like, we only got four D, no fighting. So now Cassian Jay comes back out to me, and he's chasing me around the ice, and I'm like, Cass, it's over. Like, what do you want me to tell you? So anyways, we end up getting a ten. So I get kicked out and I'm sitting in the room at the end of the period and I'm sitting there and Hartley walks in and as Hartley walks in, Torx is coming through the other door that leads into the Flames hallway and he had him and then Big Earn put his big old hands around him and started pushing Torx. But Torx was in our dressing room. He was in there because I was sitting there with my gear off because I got a 10-minute misconduct. <laughs> hey, what did what did Bob Hartley say to you that was personal? Like Like what? Just like, you know, you're not a good pro. You don't take it seriously. Um, you know, there's a reason you've been traded so many times. Um, like, stuff like that, yeah. And the, the biggest reason I hate him the most, boys, is um, whatever happened in Calgary happened, right? And I still hate him for that. And I had a deal in Lugano in the Swiss League, which is a fucking buttery deal. Of, like, it's yeah. Lugano is a beautiful place. It was good cash. They had two uh, Canadian coaches. Like, I was on the phone with the, the D coach. And I'm like, buddy, I'm a single guy. I can I can be on a plane tomorrow. He's like he's like tape your sticks up. You're coming. Next day, no call from my agent, Janny. Next morning, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So I call my agent, and he's like, yeah, Bob Hartley, who used to coach in the Swiss League, called the GM and said the only reason you're coming over there is to party. And I'm like, listen, dude, I, I live in I live 30 minutes from Hollywood. If I want to party, I'll stay in Hollywood. They're with the hottest chicks on the planet. I'm coming to play. So he sizzled my deal in Switzerland, and that's really, boys. Why I hate him the most. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's why I hate him. The most. So, yeah. hey, listen, man, Fuck where that. do you think that reputation comes from? Like, and does that bother you? Because it, it, it probably well, followed you. And it doesn't help when, when you know, Elaine Vigneault is suspending you and all that type of shit that goes down yeah. in, a, in a hockey market like Vancouver. Yeah. It's hard to escape that, OB. You know that. Yeah. So, that, that, you know, in Vancouver, you know, where I partied the most, boys, where I went out the most, I even partying, but where I went out the most was Nashville. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, that city, like, I lived off of Broadway. I'd come out after practice. If you, you know, you hear somebody playing Friends in Low Places cover band, you're like, all right, I'll poke my head in here. Yep. Next thing you know, it's like 7 o'clock. You're like, fuck, I better go get some dinner here. But in Vancouver, that that shit happened. Um, you know, in Calgary, I had a girlfriend. I had a girlfriend from the time that I was dating from from California that would come up, you know, for a couple weeks at a time. I, I wasn't going out. Like, I, I went to Cowboys once all year. Like, I really didn't go out in Calgary. So, for him to use partying to me there, it pissed me off a little bit. But, Strick, like you said, I had a reputation for what happened in Vancouver. But in Calgary, I, I didn't do anything. I mean, the city, to, to me, was not very fun to begin with. So, uh, like I said, I had a girlfriend. For him to use partying, that's another thing that pissed me off because I didn't party that year. Okay, so listen, uh, Elaine Vigneault, like, yeah. you like him. <laughs> now, now he suspends you for three games, and then he comes out. And, like, listen, I'm not a big fan of this when – when coaches and an, an, and an organization in general make things public, you know, it's yeah. like we just had Patrick Berglund on, man. We were talking about a situation where, you know, he missed practice and we were at the same bar the night before. I'm talking to John Davidson, like basically agreeing to like, hey, don't report exactly where he was. They said his, his cell phone alarm didn't go off and they kind of swept it yeah. under the rug. They dealt with it internally. And I think that's the best way to handle it. They suspend you and then he comes out and says, well, it's not only this incident, it's other incidents oh, too. So like, God. were there previous incidents? And, and how'd you overcome that, man? Because I'm sure that's got to be hard to take, especially in a market like that where they just won't let it go. Yeah, no, and, and you know what? It was the same kind of thing, right? The, the reason, Jane, you'll get a kick out of it. The reason that this one kind of 
was bad as we flew in. We played in we played in San Jose on Saturday night. So we we played in San Jose and we flew back home Saturday night. We had Sunday off. Sunday was a complete off day. <clears throat> so I went out Sunday in Vancouver and I went out all day. So I'm coming off an off day. I show up Monday morning. Same thing as Bergie. My my cell phone uh, does I don't plug it in when I'm home. It doesn't go off. I show up. I probably get there 15 minutes before the boys are going to go on the ice. So I get in there. I I go in. I throw my gitch on. I'm in the dressing room. I'm getting ready. The boys are kind of giving me a hard time. I'm like, sorry, boys. Fuck it. Yeah, the phone didn't. My alarm didn't go off. I apologize, boys. I'll pay the fine. Whatever. Whatever you guys want. Dinner, team dinner. Let me know. I apologize. Then the trainer comes in, the medical guy, and goes, you're not Bernie. He goes, you're not allowed to go out there. I said, fuck that, Bernie. I'm fine. Just let me go practice. I'll deal with it after. You're not going out there. Then the assistant coach comes in and says, take your shit off. Go get a workout in. So I'm like, all right. Go get a workout in. And then in, in Vancouver, as you guys know, there's tons of press, right? So he has a, he has this press every day where there's like 20 guys in there. So first guy said, where's O'Brien? And he, he said, I'm not going to answer any questions about Shane O'Brien. So then 10 more guys asked him and he, he answered the same way. So the media guy comes in and says, you know, this is what he said. I'm not talking about Shane O'Brien. And then the floodgates open, boys. And there was a call-in show. My buddy that lived like outside Vancouver, he's like, what happened to you? What happened to you? And I'm like, how the fuck do you know what happened to me? He's like... Because I'm listening to Sportsnet 650 right now, and they got a call-in show saying, if you seen Shane O'Brien yesterday, let me know where you saw him. And Jenny, people were like, I saw him at Yelltown Brewery. I saw him at Global. I saw him at – yeah, and it was just – and it was on, bro. It was on. Yeah. Yep. You can't hide, yeah. man. So were there other no. were there other incidents? Like, like, for him to say that, like that opens up yeah. a completely I like know. different storyline, right? Like this is like – like you're a repeat offender, and you have like had had you know multiple run-ins and multiple issues. So like what were the other issues? Yeah, no, there was never uh, – that was the only time in my, my Canucks career I was late for practice. I, I would say, listen, there was there was no there was no hiding my, my my lifestyle in Vancouver. But, like, I remember my second year, Mike Gillis called me in. And he's like, listen, I got I got the list of places where you've been in the last month. And I said, okay, Mike, let me see it. So he would – I'm like, Mike, I was having dinner there. Like, I wasn't fucking you're, – you're, you're saying, you know, Italian kitchen. I went there for dinner. He's like, yeah, but you were seen out. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Sit in my fucking condo by myself? Like, I'm, I'm not a five-star chef here. Like, I need a good meal. Yeah. So, like, they knew what I was doing. The biggest thing with AV was I would show up to training camp at, like, 232 pounds or whatever, right? Let's call it. And then as the season would go on, I would be anywhere between 235 and 240. For him, he's like, if you're not under 235, you're not, you know, you're not taking care of yourself. And I'm like, dude. I'm not a speedster out here. Like, I'm not fucking bringing the puck up on the power play. I need to, I'll take that extra five pounds in the quarter against a guy like Jay. Like, what's the fucking problem here? So it was more me and him butting heads on, on you know, five or six pounds here or there. And to him, I wasn't taking care of myself enough. Listen. 235, that's big. You're a big boy. You, know what, you want to know what BX says? Yeah. BX, BX has said, he said you were his roommate for, for one road trip. <laughs> Like he'd, he yeah. said, he's like, oh, he'd go out solo by himself, come back in, turn the lights on, fucking turn the TV on, oh, yeah. eat, eating a bag of chips. There's a game the next day. He's like, I had I had to move move on to a different roommate after that one road trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was more than one road trip that we were roommates. But, yeah, Juice, Juice threw me on the bus. He fucked. He's like, I don't know. But you know what? The best thing was, Danny, when Juice did that, this was before the boys got their own room. So Juice went in and complained, and then they gave him my own room. So I had my own room on the road for the last year that I was in Vancouver, a year and a half. It was unbelievable. How nice is that? And how stupid. Professional fucking athletes that don't have 600 games. Until, Funny, what, 2012? Until, like, the last, You had like, to share, a, like, a, like, you're a goddamn child. You're in the NHL. You're sharing a room at 32 years old. How stupid was that? That, that was the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> I remember one time I was in Vancouver. They had me room with Sammy Sallow. <laughs> Just like it was a freak thing. <laughs> and we were in New York. <clears throat> and I remember I couldn't get another room. I couldn't get another room, Jenny. So when I got back to my room, I had to go in the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom and Sammy Sallow's sleeping. I'm like, is this guy chill? What is going on here? So the only thing that I did do, Jenny, was during the last lockout that we did, I would wait on the call. And then they'd be like, does anyone else have anything else to say? And I would hit unmute. And I'd be like, boys, it's Shane O'Brien from the Avalanche. We need our own fucking rooms on the road. And we ended up getting him, but I'm with you. It was such a joke before that. So dumb. I you'd have so to go. Dumb. You'd have to go, and everybody gets their room key, and they go up. And then if you wanted, you just go back down to the hotel lobby, yeah. and be like, I'll just buy my own fucking room. Mm -hmm. so totally. You know how many times I had to do that, yeah, dude? Like, dude. hey, well, just wait a second. I gotta get my. 
and you just hope there's a room, right? Like I need another room. Hey, listen, what about playing in Tampa Bay though? Like that, that's got to be one of the coolest places to play today, obviously because they're good and they've got like so much swag and everything. But when you played there, like was it fun? I, I heard you and Mike Smith had some fun, man, running <laughs> running together in Tampa Bay. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the word. Yeah, Smitty, I love Smitty, man. Smitty's a beauty. So I got traded there my rookie year, and you know they'd won the cup like two years earlier. So you walk in there, and I didn't know anyone. And, you know, it's Marty St. Louis and, and Vinny the Cavalier and Brad Richards and Dan Boyle. It's just like, holy fuck. And then, and then you meet Tortorella. I'm like, what the hell? You know, I went from, you know, my boys, Getzlap, Perry, Penner, Salon, guys that I've known for years where I felt comfortable to walk in this place that I was like, wow, this is crazy. So uh, at first it was a little bit of adjustment, but I mean, Vinny the Cavalier, Marty St. Louis, two of my favorite guys ever, uh, Dan Boyle. Uh, I loved it. And then they sold the team to, uh, to Orrin Cools and fucking Len Berry. Uh, and then it was a complete shit show, man. They hired Barry Melrose. Jay, they took us over to Prague. Now, this is before iPads and streaming service. This is, they took us over to Prague. We were playing the Rangers in Prague. They took us over 13 days before the game. <laughs> like, what do you think NHL guys are going to do? I know. Me, me, Ryan Malone, oh. Smitty, Bugsy Malone went out. Bugsy Malone went out 13 straight nights. I went out 10 straight. Marty St. Louis pulled me outside after the 10th and was like, you can't go out tonight. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you, they're, they're all over you. Like, they're going to fucking change you. And I was like, well, they're going to change that. Might as well go out anyways. But uh, I, I love Tampa. It's just too bad that uh, Jay Feaster and John Tortorella got fired the way they did because yeah. Orrin Cools and Len Berry ruined it. 13 the, days before you played in Prague. Are they fucking third, dumb? Are they? Yeah. Are they dumb? Like, <laughs> and then we had, and then we had an exhibition game in Berlin and in Bratislava. That was it. Other than that, we, were, we flew to Berlin, played, flew back. No, then we went to Bratislava. And the owner of the team in Bratislava, Jenny, was a beauty. So we get there the night before the game. He has his dinner. He has all the cheerleaders from the team there. He's like, come eat the – I'm like, what is going on here? This is unbelievable. Then we go back to Prague, and we don't play for another seven days before we play the Rangers opening night. It's just like, come on. You're Remember, asking I, I, for I, trouble. Dude, I had Brian Lawton on, on Cooley's show on Sirius. And I'm like – because he's the one that traded me. I'm like, Lawton, I got to ask you a question. I'm like, <laughs> what were you guys thinking taking us 13 days before a game? Like, take us there four days before the game. Yeah, no shit. Dude. Hey, listen, was was Melrose there? Was he the coach? Or was he not there yet? Yeah, he was Barry was the coach. Yeah, he uh great guy. I mean, Jenny, you would have loved him. Great guy, old school guy. You know, it's funny, you know, I had Stammer on the pod early, early in our in our podcast, and I said, Stammer, remember Barry Melrose? He's like, Yeah, man, he would come in and like he would talk like he was on ESPN. Like he would do a, a video. <laughs> he'd have he like an earpiece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'd do like a teleprompter. Like, okay, so yeah, he's like, Okay, hey, so here's Stam Coast sliding it over to Vacap. And like we'd leave him be like, he didn't coach us anything, he just like told us to play. So uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> it was a bit of a shit show, but I love Barry. Uh, he was good to me, and he gave me a heads up that that I was going to get traded. I mean, I got traded. We flew back from Prague. They traded me on the way back. I landed in Tampa, got off the plane. They told me I was traded. I had to jump on a plane that afternoon from Tampa to Vancouver. So I went Prague to Tampa, Tampa to Vancouver. How was that for a travel day, Jim? Oh, oh God. In two days. Yeah. My vertigo would have fucking kicked in. I would have been losing my yeah. goddamn mind. It was a mess. To <laughs> me. I, I listened to the, 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 the rumors, man, about everything that was going on in Tampa Bay oh, at yeah. that time. And like, we had no and was, like, and Len Berry had some shit going on with a bunch of former players and stuff. Anyway, it was just kind of a disaster, like all around, you know, right? Yeah, you know what's funny about Len Berry is, and I like Len, and Tyson Berry, obviously, is a kid. Tyson, I was Tyson's first deep, deep, deep partner in, in Colorado, so I love Tyson Berry. And Len Berry was obviously coming to the game. So finally, after I think Tyson's second or third game, he's like, my dad's here. You know, I'm like, fucking, yeah, bring him. I'm having people over, bring him over to my house. So next thing I know, it's me and Len, and it's about – fucking two in the morning and we're last man standing and i'm like i gotta ask you like why the fuck did you trade me he's like oh you were going out too much i'm like i'm like the only reason you knew i was going out was because you were out and i would see him everywhere <laughs> in Tampa. i'm like shit there's the owner again but uh good he's actually a great guy uh we've got to become buddies but it was kind of funny jenny like talking to him just being him in my apartment having a couple cocktails like why did you trade me bud <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you got to find, you got to find out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, what, what, what about, uh, was, was Vinny LeCavier, I, I know he's a good dude, was he cheap? Because <laughs> you, know, I mean, uh, you know what I mean, though, Shane, like, you yeah. hang out with guys, we were going out a lot, like, you know some of the guys that make a lot of money, there's always a couple, man, that just, they're fucking tight, you know, yeah. they're fucking tight. Yeah, yeah no, no, I know exactly what you mean, Jenny, and I, and I love Roberto Luongo, he's one of my favorite teammates, but, but Lou's cheap, you know, I love him, but he's cheap, you know, uh, 
big room service guy, Lou, you would never really go on the road, which is fine. But uh, I remember he did you know, the captain's dinner. He had a set menu with it. I'm like, Louie, are you kidding me with the set menu here? What are you talking? This is one one bottle of red wine we can get. Like, I'm like, <laughs> let's order a couple. You only get one let's glass. Open, the fixed menu. You only get one let's glass. Open, let's open some Caymans up here for the boys. A little silver oak and let her breathe. Come on, Lou. Set menu. What are you making? Ten bananas or whatever he's making. Yeah, yeah dude. He's the captain you, too. It's hard hey, to shake. How, that. How, how listen? How goofy was that though? That like the goalie's yeah. the captain of the team. Like, like, what's your take on that? Yeah, it was just hard because as a starting goalie in Vancouver, I mean, it was stupid to begin with. I think if you even asked Bobby Lou, it was, he would say it was stupid. It's stupid to name a captain, you know, the goalie or captain. But in Vancouver, it's especially because now he's the captain and now he's the starting goalie. And now he has to answer to the media every single fucking day, right? So it's like he's already dealing with enough stuff. Um, to me, like, I remember my second year in Vancouver, and I, and I love the media guys there. They were great to me, but I'm like, boys, are you trying to make this harder on us? Like you're, you're asking him these questions. You're getting them pissed off. Like, just leave them, like leave them alone. Like we're in first place. But I remember when I went to Vancouver, Mike Gills called me in. He's like, you know, I brought you here for toughness and this and that. And I, I, you know, we're going to have a hard time making the playoffs in the West. I said, okay. And we ended up winning our division both years I was there. So I just think we were, they were better than they expected. So I think if they knew we were going to be as good as we were, they probably wouldn't have gave Louis the C. They were just trying to keep him happy. I think. Yeah, that keeps that, him happy. Well, though? that was a kind of a mess, dude. His whole contract situation. He's like, I'm going to be only re- way I'm going to be happy is how I have a fucking C on my jersey, which he didn't. I have don't a know. C. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he had a C on. Uh, he put it on his mask at the bottom of his mask. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jenny, it's a great point. I don't, I don't know. I, I just think, I mean, we're players. What keeps us happy? Ice time and money, which he was getting lots of both. So I don't oh, think they did a C. Hey, how how many suspensions did you have? Like, you got the the one game for Avery, <laughs> right? You got a couple yeah. games for. When you when you got the stick in high on Weiss, you kind of jabbed him in the eye. I jabbed him, and uh, he's like, "Yeah, I speared him in the face." Yeah, you yeah, speared him in the face. He's like bleeding from the <laughs> eye. But like Avery, yeah, listen, I'm, I listen, and everyone loves Avery now. I'm like watching his his Instagram story last night. And he's fucking breaking shit down. It's actually kind of funny. He's very entertaining. But did you hate him when you played against him? Like you really want you wanted to fucking kill him the way it looked like on yeah. the bench. You know what? I've become buddies with Aves, and Aves is. I think we all, I, I mean, I don't want to speak for Janny, but I think we all get humbled a little bit when we're done playing, right? Like mm-hmm. you just kind of, you just kind of sit back and say, okay, it's over. It was great. Um, you know, Aves has done that and, and, you know, he's doing jujitsu now and yeah, he's, he's really, he's really a different dude. And, um, you know, he's been great, great to us. And, and, uh, but yeah, fuck, he was a loud mouth. I mean, he was a loud mouth that wouldn't really fight. You know, he wouldn't fight me ever, which whatever, I was bigger than him. So maybe I was being the bully a little bit, but yeah, I, I, listen, I was having a tough night. The truth be told about that story is I got benched in the third period and, uh, you know, A's was running his mouth all game and Boros was running his mouth all game. And <laughs> I, I had had enough and they were chirping and down the bench. I came like an idiot. And, uh, you know, the rest is what happened. But I, I was pissed that I got benched and I couldn't get out there and do anything against these guys. So I figured I'd go down and stupid me, hey, Jenny, right on TSN, a chicken oh. parm standing in the middle, right between me. I'm like, not taking the cameras right on me. Like just a dummy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cares hey you didn't even have yeah. any, like you were kind of the lone wolf there for a bit right like who else did you have do you have big tom sestito maybe for a little bit like but you no didn't... but yeah no so jenny we you know i remember playing against the canucks earlier in my career right let's let's say when i was with anaheim we had like 40 peros moen yeah uh you know myself um sean thornton like we'd go in and play vancouver or they came in to play us like it was crickets on there and they had nobody really there that would you know, maybe Wade Brookbank was there then. I don't even, I, Wade might have been gone. So, anyways, where I'm going with this is we come in, he brings in, you know, Mike Gills brings in Darcy Hornachuk, Rick Ripton, That's right. myself, Tanner Glass, you know. And this is what pissed me off when they shipped, you know, myself and Hornachuk out of town after the second year was like, these guys forgot. Like, you guys were a soft fucking hockey club. Like, Kessler and Burroughs were, were, were not the same Kessler and Burroughs until you brought some toughness in there. And to me... You know, if they would have had Hornachuk in that Stanley Cup final that they could have threw in there against Sean Thornton, who knows? Yeah, you know, maybe. maybe they do have a Stanley Cup ring. Yeah, Hornachuk's a great we, fucking Yeah, we just party with him man. down in Nashville. Yeah. Awesome, Yeah, dude. he's a beauty. I spilled my awesome. coffee all over his fucking Italian leather black coat. But... Yeah, Andy <laughs> kind of fucked him over. I got to tell you, I got to tell you a great Hornachuk story, boys. So, fucking, Hornie is like the king of, like, coming in the room and being like, Jenny, Jenny, I got this stock option, buddy. It's fucking unbelievable. I'm like, you know, you just be like, Hornie, I'm... I've never given you a, a, a penny, let alone some like thousands of dollars. And he, he always had deals in Vancouver, right? Like he was always working deals. So it was our second year. Henrik Sedin's coming off the, off the heart trophy. 
And I'm last guy at the rink, me and Jorge or whatever. I'm getting out of the shower, and I hear our, our equipment guy, Patty O'Neill, losing his fucking mind. And I come around the corner, and Hoarder Chuck's trying to steal Sadine's hockey sticks out the side door because he's got a fucking deal with someone that he's going to get Henrik to sell him, and he's going to sell him or something. And he got caught trying to take Henrik Sadine's, like, sticks out of the Vancouver Canucks dressing room. And I saw it, boys, and I'm like, Hoarder, you're a, you're a beauty buddy. He's like, ah, yeah, you know. <laughs> were, were like pe- just ask Henrik he probably would have gave him to you were yeah. people weirded out by that or was it no, just like uh, who was cares? it funny it's funny it's just horny I mean Patty O'Neill was a little charged up about it but this is the greatest for Chuck story so he was notorious for using guys sticks in practice right like he was like I want to try someone's curve so Burroughs had back to back hat tricks Burroughs had that back to back hat trick so he had his hat trick hat trick stick obviously in his thing tucked away if Horry doesn't grab it, cuts it down, saws it off, and kicks it out for practice, and we're five minutes into practice, and Burr's looking at a stick. He's like, "Is that my hat trick stick, Horry?" He's like, "Oh, I didn't know." So he basically cut. He basically oh, took Burr's hat trick stick and cut it and shaved it down and used it in practice. <laughs> That's awesome. How is Burr's? Is he a cool cat? Oh, great question. Is he a cool cat? I mean, listen, I played poker with Burr on the plane. Uh, I loved having him on my team, but I mean, there's a video of, of, you know, when I played against him in Nashville and Colorado, like I tried to kill him, right? Like I wanted to kill him and, um, great guy to have on your team. But, but when you play against him, as you probably know, Jay, he's, he, you just, you want to kill him. Yeah. I want to rag that. He's with fucking yeah. Marty St. Louis now in, uh, in Montreal. Oh, Co- is he? Coaching. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's coaching. Yeah. Hey, yeah, he is. you got worked up about Bo Horvat, did you? Like you like took that personal. Like you went crazy what about do do, Andy? Bo Horvat. Well, he made the comments <laughs> about Vancouver. <laughs> and you know, like yeah. in the post game, oh, like ringside interview, you know, post game, whatever, and he's you know, basically said the uh, the Islander fans are it's a better place to play in New York, whatever he said, versus Vancouver. So you were you genuinely pissed off about that? Yeah, I was. And you know, I don't know Bo, I don't know Bo Horvat, but you know, my, my boy, Travis Green, uh, who I absolutely love, you know, got fired in Vancouver. And to me, listen, if you're the captain of a hockey club, you know, you, you got to sometimes get out of your element if things aren't going well, right? And they were losing, and I watched his Canucks games, and Bo would go out there with no emotion, not hit anybody, not do anything, and then that would be it. And then he got fired, right? And then mm-hmm. Bruce Boudreau got fired. And, you know, it was, it was just to me like, hey, buddy, you got every opportunity. It didn't work out for you. Don't come back at the fans in the city of Vancouver because that's a place to me that I love. I love the fans. I love the city. You know, my time there with AV, yeah, sometimes me and him didn't see eye to eye. But when it came to the city and the fans, they they treat me, they treated me unbelievably. Like, I would go out for dinners. People would come up to me, buy me drinks. I'll be this, I'll be that. Like, it was great to me, man. I, I love that city. Now, Bo, you didn't get to experience it because you never made the playoffs. Like, that city come playoff time when people are walking around with Vancouver Canucks jerseys on, the flags on the cars. There's no better place in the world to play. And to me, I think Bo Horvat's soft. I'll be honest with you. And for him to call it the fans, I was like, "Sell down, bud." So I, I, I yeah, it, it did piss me off. Yeah, I've covered I've covered playoff series there, man, and it is like 2003. It's it's it is uh it's crazy. I mean, they they get after it, man. It's yeah. a, it's it's a fun environment to be in. But it, it reminded me of when Jack Eichel called out Buffalo too yeah. when he came back. It's yeah. like you know, listen, you're in a better spot. Yeah. You didn't want to be there. You're Stay calling out the fans. Never call out the fans. Never. You know. Yeah, and you know what? And and you know, I've become buddies with Ikes over the years, and, and he was out here last summer, and. You know, he was generally hurt on how it went in Buffalo because, you know, he felt like he he gave everything he could there. He felt like, you know, he tried as hard as he could. He had the injury, and we all know what happened. And, you know, I kind of said the same thing, Strix, as I said, Ike, it's over. It's done with. Don't worry about Buffalo. You're in, you're in Vegas. You know, come back. And this is this is last summer heading into this year. And I just said, don't worry about Buffalo. Just it is what it is. It happened. You're a Vegas Golden Knight. So uh, I, I think Jack, deep down, was was upset it didn't work out in Buffalo and took it personally. Yeah, man. Hey, what do you think of uh, fucking Colorado losing? You got that Nachuskin getting into oh, a man. weird jam with a girl. <laughs> like, look, look, we party. and yeah. But once fucking playoffs are there, man, and totally. you got to just, you can't think of pussy. You got to no. fucking think of the task in hand. <laughs> and, and, and then Kyle McCarr does a stupid fucking thing. He gets dinged for a game. Like, what do you think of this series? What do you think of that whole, sh- that, that, that the whole like, you know, that, uh, that scenario with Nachuskin too, kind of like probably rattling the team. Yeah. Yeah. You're a beauty, Jay. You're right. And listen, I, I would, at the start of every playoff series, I, I would give up, I wouldn't drink it all through the playoffs. And I, and I definitely wouldn't be worried about getting late. Now when the series ended, I would worry about both those things before the next series started. But <laughs> yep. through, through seven games, I thought for me, all I cared about was playoff hockey. And 
Now, granted, they won the cup last year. So would have that changed my approach if I already had a cup? I, I don't know. I can't answer that. But yeah, it was Janie. It was a big blow, man. Yeah, dude. Um, the McCarr hit. Listen, I got into it with the up dog. The up dog, he's getting soft, eh? Like he's oh, out here with two kids hanging out with all the rich people in Malibu oh, and Aspen, and he's getting soft. Like he thought that hit on McCann was the dirtiest thing he's ever seen. I said, Uppy, you, you, you're changing on me, bro. But um, that one hurt them. I just think their lack of depth, man. Like, you know, Janny, you know, you were a great character guy that, that when you got out there, you played hard every single night. Like the Avalanche, you know, Newhook, Mulgan, uh, Myers, O'Connor. I mean, those guys are donuts on the board. They're just, their lack of depth, really. They miss Landis Cox so much. Oh, yeah. oh, God, dude. Yeah, yeah, they're not the same team, they're man. Not they're the not, same. they're not the same team. And it's so it's so hard to repeat. You know, that's why I give yeah. Tampa Bay credit, even though it was kind of... Even though a, you did have that tweet, I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't uh, delete it. Well, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. The up dog came at your strips. He did. did. I'm like, I'm like up. Uppy, did. Uppy, you'll text me about something, <laughs> and now you want to go public with it. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not oh, fighting you publicly on it Twitter. A comment. He retweeted it and had a quote tweet. Well, That's it's like, great. listen, hey, hey, OB, when when the Blues went to the bubble, like all the teams that had won in recent years, like they just didn't want to be there. They weren't like all in to like go through what you had to totally. go through yeah. to stay there. Like they wanted to get the fuck oh, out yeah. of there. So, yeah. you know, I'll give Tampa Bay credit, but I guarantee you if that was Tampa Bay today – they're probably not winning the Stanley Cup in a bubble environment. They probably want to get the hell out of there. It's like miserable, but they hadn't won before. The next year, it was it was goofy too. You've got like, you know, Montreal playing in the North Division. Oh, Tampa God. Bay's in the Central. Oh. They're in the same. Both Eastern Conference Fuck. team playing in the Stanley Cup final. Montreal wasn't even that good. They were a 500 team. So I just wanted to see them win. And I love Coop. I love yeah. Patty Maroon. All those. Listen, I wanted to see them win one more Stanley Cup in a traditional environment. And they got to the final last year. I felt like it would have cemented. You know who they who they really are. You know. Yeah, no, and, and all those points are, are valid. And, and, I, and I would say, from a bubble perspective, is that it's, it was almost harder for them to win for what you said. Like, I can't imagine. Listen, I, I love sacrificing a hotel for three months. Now, I don't know if I could how I would have handled that. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're playing for the Stanley Cup, I'm sure you would just be you know committed to it. No but fans. I, I, but with no fans, I can't imagine. Oh. Like Jenny, remember Jenny? You remember like going into like I don't know Columbus. Or somewhere on a Tuesday, and you're like, man, this is brutal. Uh, like, how are we going to get fired? Like, imagine playing in front of nobody. Like, that's insane to me. It's got awful. And that's why the American it's League. Awful. That's why the, when you're, oh, yeah. oh, God, playing in the American <laughs> League my last couple of years and just 300 people, and you got this yeah. kid that they call up. You don't know who the fuck he is because he throw lefts, <laughs> he throw rights. Yeah. He's gonna, like, what's he going to do to me? You know, that was fucking, that was brutal. Absolutely brutal. Yeah. And then Columbus, so speaking of that, like, They'll score, and you're like, oh, cool. And then all of a sudden, that cannon goes off. You're like, oh, bam. Hey. You're like, god damn. Tell Elpy to I settle down, can. Obi. The Vancouver Canucks legend, Scotty Upshaw. Tell him to calm down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, the Upshaw, the Upshaw, he's, uh, yeah, he's, 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 he likes to get the red wine going, and then the Twitter, the Twitter thing, you start oh, firing. Yeah. So he's, yeah. he's notorious it. for, for, uh, Open up a ball of red wine, watch the hockey, and then he just starts humming out the tweets. So yeah, he and, something... him and Tim Peel. Yeah, he and Peelzy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, Peel, my boy Peeler. Peelzy Peel-Z, Jr. Peel-Z, yeah. Oh, Peelzy loves it too, man. He's oh my blocked God. by all the uh, women uh, <laughs> sportscasters. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Peeler, yeah. Right, yeah. He can't be doing I that. I love Peeler. I love Peeler, Fuck but yeah. Uh, yeah, he always just seems to get himself in some kind of hot water at times. Doesn't he? That beauty. Oh, yeah. I love it, oh, oh, my God. Yeah. He's, it, 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 oh, God. It just finds him. You know what I'm saying? Like, we do a radio show once a, once a week, too, man. I mean, him and Jamal, the mayors, dude. Yeah. And, like, I'm glad, like, nobody's listening <laughs> half the time is some of the shit that he says. Hey, real there. quick, though. We, hey. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, but not, you know, you talk about partying in Vancouver. Nobody loved the Roxy more than Tim Peel, bro. Oh, I would I see him in there. I would, it almost got to the point where when he would rep our games, I would look at him and I, he would be like, give me the head nod. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll see you there. Like, I'll see you there after. And that was the thing about <laughs> Vancouver. Real quick, boys. Yeah. And, and Jenny, you'll, you'll appreciate it. Like, we won, at, we won a lot at home, boys. Like, we, we were a good home team. So, if you win a game, you know, you don't go to the rink the next day till probably 10 o'clock. What, you're not going to go out for a couple and see what's out there after, you know, big Canucks win? It's just like, oh, come shit. on. Like, what are we talking about here? What are we talking about? Hey, you like, you like the way these referees are talking to players on the ice. And I'm, 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 listen, they've been doing it probably for a long time. But, like, there's a lot being made out of it because, like, the microphone's catching, picking up these yeah. referees, basically just talking shit to players. Yeah, like, get a does, little cocky. Yeah. Does that bother you or no? Yeah. You know what? I mean, listen, it took me a while to figure out how to talk to refs. I remember Billy McCurry dinged me for four minors at MSG because I chirped him over the first one. So 
it takes a while. But yeah, there's some refs out there. Like Justin St. Pierre used to be like that way. Like, don't fuck around the night. I'll, you know, I'll yeah, show you. Like, it is what it is. Um, I just think like some of these young refs, like settle down, boys. Like settle down. Like they're such in a hurry to call a penalty that I'm just like, yeah, they are. It drives me bananas, boys. It drives me bananas. And it's not just like the NHL refs. Fucking MLB. The umpires are acting like they're fucking shit kickers too. Fucking yeah. talking shit. You know, kicking guys out of the game. Like, they're just a little cocky. A little mm-hmm. cocky. Yeah. No one's watching no. you. No one came here to watch you. Even your family. <laughs> when you winked at Peelzy, were you like, I know what you did last night. And then you go elbow <laughs> yeah. a guy and he doesn't give you a penalty because that's what I yeah. did to him. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Peelzy, you missed that call. You were looking at yourself in the glass. You missed that call. There was a, <laughs> there was a fucking trip that you missed, Jill. You were looking at yourself oh. in the glass. Fixing that hair. He'd he admit that. He, he admit that. <laughs> I love it. Hey, listen, yeah. I, you and like and and, jo- and Joffrey Lupo, you guys like are, are all tight, right? With Uppy and, and yeah. you and him. How, how come he never joined you on the podcast? Like, did you ever ask him? Like, I mean, sure you did. Like, what's the reason that he didn't come on board with you guys? Yeah, no, we we, we want to lose from day one. Um you know, Loops is all over the place. He, he lives, you know, now he's winters in Aspen. At that time, he had just moved to New York and opened a bar called Do West, which if you boys are ever in Manhattan, you got to go check out. It's a great little spot. So, um, you know, he's just, he's kind of a, you know, a quiet guy at times. Like, I first met Loops, like, it was my first rookie camp, and, and you know, I was kind of eyeing guys up, like, hey, these guys aren't that fucking good. I got a chance here. Like, I'm going to, you know, get in a couple fights. It's going to be all right. And then I saw Joffrey Lupo, like, shoot a hockey puck. And I was like, holy shit. Like, I've never seen anyone shoot it like that. And I uh, got to know him and, and you know, quiet guy. And I, I was the other way, right? I was a raw, raw guy. So it was intriguing to get to know him. But, um, you know, I try to get him on as much as we can. But he just didn't have the desire to, to get in there consistently and do it. But he knows the game. Um, you know, he knows the game very, very well. And uh, it, it, we, we still wish we had him. All right. Okay. So, you know, like, we like girls, you know, especially when we yeah. played. Who's the most like? Who's the biggest wheel you've ever played with? And I'm not talking the superstar that walks in, everybody knows him. I'm talking yeah. a fucking wheel that has to really grind it and has just fucking knows how to talk to chicks. Like who, who's the biggest? Besides wheel? Delzato, oh, yeah, well, throw him in there. <laughs> Delzato, yeah. Who who is it? I, I never played with Delzato, but uh, the girl I was the girl I was dating in, in Calgary. At the girl I was telling you about when I didn't go out in Calgary because I had a girlfriend. I remember when I first met her and she's like, you're a hockey player, right? I met her at, at, at high in Hollywood. I was just banged up, Jenny. And I'm like, I text her the next day. I'm like, yeah, you lived in Long Beach, right? That's what you said. She's like, yeah, yeah. So anyways, like the next week we're like hanging out. She's like, you Michael Delzato? And I'm like, no, I played against him. But like, <laughs> I don't know him. Like, she's like, this guy's relentless. I'm like, yeah, I, I've heard he's, I've heard he's pretty uh, persistent guy. So that's, that's as far as I know about Delzato. But dude, you know what? Like, I give a guy credit, Alex Bull Duke, a guy I played with in Vancouver who was up and down. Um, you know, Duker would come in and get called up, and he would be, he would be my wingman, and, and, and he was good. I mean, he was good at talking to ladies. And, and as much as it kills me to say this, boys, is, is I, I got to give it to Upshaw, man. I mean, this guy, you know, when he went out, it was just the, – the force was the force was strong with him, man. He would just go in there and start chatting up girls. He's he's a great leadoff guy. But a, a sneaky guy I would say is Alex Bull Duke. He was my running main man. He, he was good with the girls. They just had it. They oh, just yeah. got the game. Yeah. Know what to say. You're not intimidating. Well, You're not like you yeah. Know. You know, and you know, Jenny. I mean, the National League. It's it's fucking. It's easy, right? Like yeah. you come in, you got a nice suit on. You play the next night. You say, hey, how you doing? You just talk to them. Hey, you want to go to the game next night? Sure, I'll leave you a couple tickets. And then if, if if you get lucky enough that you stay in the city after that game, then it's like, okay, where are we gonna meet up after? So yeah, dude. I realized that I knew at the time that the National League was helping me, but when I got out of the league, I was like man, maybe I wasn't as good as the girls as I thought. I just had that NHL card that was helping me, you know? Because when you, when you lose that NHL card, Jay, then you really got to start scrapping. Well, you better be funny or something yeah, or, or have a good yeah, podcast. Yeah. Or rich. <laughs> or rich. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Hey, how, how so I, you made good money, man, but you didn't you didn't sign that monster, monster deal. Like, were you frugal with your money? Were you safe with it? Or were you fucking making it rain all the goddamn time and have to regroup again, kind of like I did? Um, yeah. but like, how are um, you with the, everything with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know what? I, uh, I, I probably spent a little bit too much money at times throughout my career. Um, you know, when it comes to partying and traveling like that. And, you know, I had a financial guy from Ontario, this guy, his name was Rob Hooper. He was really good with my money when I was young. Right. Like I didn't, you know, I didn't go into places and, and buy a house right away. And I didn't have four cars and, you know, I didn't, yeah. I didn't do that stuff. I rented a two bedroom apartment for, you know, 
five grand to three thousand dollars a month, and I had an Escalade truck, and you know it was just me. And um, I will say this, Jenny, I made it out of my out of my you know career without a divorce, so that's like there making double, bro. Fuck that's like yes, you know that's like making double. You're so, damn uh, right, dude. Yeah, I, I'm lucky. I never got divorced, so I, I feel like I made double what I made. Were you were you ever close to getting married or no? You know what, dude? I, I live with a girl. So I get traded. I make, I make the show. I get traded to Tampa. I got torts all over me. I, I, you know, I get my girlfriend back at the time who was the sweetest girl ever. And, and, and maybe at the time it was different, but we to answer your question. We lived together for six months in Tampa. So I got a taste of the married life. Like I, I knew what it was about. And I was like, man, this is, this is a lot, right? Like you come home, she's there, you know, <laughs> she's always there. So that kind of, that kind of woke me up a bit to, uh, to not rush into marriage. And, and, my dad always told me, don't get married before you're 30. And I'm going to be 40 in August, so I listened to him pretty good. So did I, man. No, seriously. When I first started playing at a young age, you see the guy, the, the older guys would tell me, like, yeah. dude, I got a divorce. Just take your fucking time. Take your totally. time, man, and just play it out. Worry about hockey first. Don't worry about anything else. But on the other hand, if you're a single guy for a long time, you get yourself into jams. When you're trying to wheel girls all the fucking time, you're spending fucking money. You're staying out yeah. fucking late. So, like, that, yeah. could, you know, you don't want to get a divorce, but you also don't want to be fucking <laughs> thinking with your dick all the damn time because you're spending money and you're going to you're gonna wear yourself out. So there's a balance to it, man. There's a total balance to it. <laughs> there, is, there is a balance to it. And, and, you know, early in my career, I would, I would agree with you, like, with, like staying out late, right? It's, it's the hunt that gets you. Trying to look at your watch, you're going, fuck, it's 1230. Like, I got to get home, but... You know, and then, then you, yeah, yeah, then you get through the league and, and you, you know, you get your bullpen locked and loaded. And then it's just like, you know, you come in, you have dinner, you meet up with someone. There like, it is. As my career went on, I didn't stay out as late as I did when I was younger, you know, but younger, yeah, I would chase it till, till I had to. Till, till the sun yeah. came up. Man. Hey, till the sun came up. Yeah. <laughs> Before we let you go, listen, I, I, I want to give you a shout out, like, you know, um, what you guys are doing and everything, but man, like, listen, you know, Jimmy Hayes was such a big part of what you guys did. Obviously you guys had a, had a, you know, yeah. close thing going there, man. I mean, that, that, that just had to completely like rock you guys, you know, but you know, you guys done a great job to keep yeah. his memory alive and everything, you know? Yeah. Thank you. You know, that was a tough one for me. Um, you know, I met, I met Jimmy, you know, I had a cup of coffee with Florida near the end of my career. And, and I remember I met Jimmy at training camp and, you know, I was a veteran. So they put me in the big room with the boys, even though I was on a PTO. And I remember like, Day two or three at training camp, up and the, the bully and the boys and forty. I'm like, is this kid like this every day? And they're like, yeah, he is. He's just he was just a ball of energy and, and and funny and uh and at the same time, I knew Jimmy was going to need something to do when he was done playing, right? And you, you talk about you know never getting that big contract. You know, Hazy made a little bit of money, but when he retired, he was 30 years old. Like, you know, it, it was crazy to me. So I reached out to him. Um, you know, I thought he'd be great at it. He was great at it. And the craziest thing is, I talked to Jimmy. Uh, on the Thursday or Friday about that upcoming season because he died in August, I believe. And, you know, Monday morning I woke up and my phone was blown up and I remember oh, calling up you being like, is this true? And he's like, yeah, man, he's, he's gone. And talk, boys, it was, it was crazy. And go to Boston and Dorchester and see the, 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 the community. Um, but to be honest with you, Strix, there was about a month there, three weeks, where I didn't know if I wanted to do the pod anymore. Mm -hmm. And then it came to the conclusion that we got to keep this going for Jimmy kind of thing. Hell yeah, man. He'd want you to do that. Totally. You know? Totally. Give me your top three most fun players you played with. They don't have to be superstars, but just the, the funnest guys that just connected oh. with you. Yeah, yeah. That's a great question. Um, I mean, I got to go, like, I, I got to give you probably more than three. I'll go back to go where, ahead. like, American League. I'll go, like, Zenon Kanopka, oh, yeah. P.A. Peronto, oh, yeah. Trevor Gillies. Oh. Um, you know, then I'll go Anaheim. I'll go Penner, Perry, um... You know, in Tampa, I would say, you know, a guy by the name of Kyle Wanvig that was up and down with us. I loved hanging out with Wani, Ryan Malone, oh. Mike Smith. Like, just so many good guys, man. It's just, yeah, I was very, very fortunate. Um, I had so many good guys. And that's what made the game, you know, made the game the best. It's just all those good dudes, man. I, I was lucky. Dude, yeah, you were in Portland with fucking Gillies, weren't you? Or I that... love the train, man. Yeah, I was in Portland. Our team was fucking maniacs. That Lo we had, you guys we were loaded. Loaded. We had Trevor Gillies, Jordan Smith, who and Smitty lost his eye that yep. year. That this guy would have played in the show for sure, man. He was a right-handed D-man that threw lefts. Yep. That would have played in the show 100. percent We had Nathan Saunders. Uh, we had a tough team, man. It was it was fun. And Getsy. You ever skate? 
What's that? Do you ever skate? Like, do you ever like put the gear on hockey and go play? The, the hockey so game listen. that you played your whole life, do you ever do it anymore? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Janny, listen, so a buddy of ours, he actually passed away from ALS. Um, Chris Shupp was his name. Absolute beauty. So last fall, two falls ago, we had a charity game from New Jersey. And I hadn't been on the ice since I fucking retired. And I put on about 50 pounds. So my equipment barely fucking fit me. But I went out there and played. And dude, listen, Jenny, I wake up every day trying not to be sore, right? I, I swim now. I walk on the wall. I walk on the, on the ocean. So my goal is to wake up and not be sore. Jenny, I woke up that next day in my hotel room in New York. My fucking neck was kinked. My back was in. My, it took me two weeks to get back to feeling normal. So uh, no, boys, I don't skate and I don't see me skate anytime soon. Will you ever live anywhere else, man? Like, are you like that? that like, that's your spot. You're not leaving. You love the coast or what? Uh, you know what? Listen, in Newport, there's a little bubble here in Newport that we're very, very lucky. But there's a lot of other stuff that goes on in California that I can't stand. Um, yeah. <laughs> no listen, I thought, yeah, I, I thought about moving, boys. Uh, I thought about going back to Tampa, maybe. Um, I'm eventually going to buy a, a lake house back home. I got two nephews, uh, Janny, that are six, and Smith's going to be three. You love these kids. They're just complete meatheads. I love them. So um, eventually, I'll, I'll probably spend my summers back there. That's always been my plan. Uh, but no, I, to answer your question, I don't know if I'll be here forever. Yeah, I know. Didn't you grow up in a hockey family though, man? Like yeah, you did. your uncle, like, who's your uncle? He was like a, he played in the league, right? For like 10 years. Yeah. My, yeah. My uncle Dennis O'Brien played 10 years. He's, he's got, I think I finished with almost 600 games and he's got like 620. So he nipped me by a few, but uh. yeah, man, it was, it was huge for me. And, and like where, where I grew up, you know, we had him, uh, Ron Smith that played in the NHL, Jimmy Roberts, who played for the St. Louis Blues oh, yeah. from oh, Port Hope. Legend. My oh. uncle. Yeah, and so you know, I was a kid coming in, and I'd see those pictures of them up in my up in the rink and, and Port Hope, and I don't know, it just made me believe that fuck if those boys can do it, why can't I? So when I made the NHL, the only thing I'd ask for my hometown was, you know, make sure you put my picture up in the rink, so these younger kids coming up now, you know, realize <laughs> that it's, it's doable. You know, it's doable. Hell yeah, dude, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So you like water. You say you want to get a, a lake house back in your hometown. He swims, dude. Like, where are you but swimming? Look, are you yeah. in a pool or in the ocean? I swim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I live in the full country club life, boys. Yeah. I play pickleball. I swim in the pool. <laughs> I I, I, hey, I chirp, I chirp up you about being soft. But, Jenny, I mean, I'm, I'm fucking soft, too, now, Jenny. It's not perfect. I'm a princess, I'm soft, Shane. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Work my ass off, yeah. man. Fuck that. Like, yeah. I, I do the country club shit, too. I golf. Playing hockey does wear you out a little bit, man. But I, I, I love my, like... If I make a little bit more money, I'd get a goddamn boat. You know, I miss my boat. Yeah. Like I love it. I love being on the water. So, Jenny, what's going on? You're married, right? I saw a video of you, and you got kids and stuff too. I, I, I keep a track on your social. You got? Do you have a family now? No, I don't have any kids. You know, no. um, I think my sperm's fucked up. You know, because <laughs> uh, I'm like blowing be in her. I, I, it's not like I use a goddamn condom or anything. Like, no, like I'm, I'm. It just, it just, I just. We don't know what's going on I don't there, know what the, Ob. Man, to I be honest with you, hard, you know, man. Like, I think, yeah. I think my sperm's fucked up, but I can't, you know what, you know, you know what, Jenny, I said this to me and Luke's were talking and I was like, you know, we should have fucking froze our sperm when we were 25, like <laughs> fucking great shape, I fucking know. freeze these babies. I'm like, Luke's me and you now, I'm, I mean, I'm spitting dust hundred percent. Are you kidding me? Like if I, I don't know if I'll ever have kids, but if I do, it's going to take more than one try. I can guarantee you that. Jenny. I'm going to have to really dig in. I'm going to have to really dig in. Or yeah. just don't yeah. have kids either. Like we're. We're okay not having kids. I got animals, like, you know, yeah. it's not the same. And I, I, I get that. But if it's if it's not meant to be, then Kate and I, I just have to stay alive and healthy. Yeah. So she's yeah. not fucking lonely if I pass away yeah. early because I'm a fucking Hey, idiot. are you surprised that Uppy settled down? Like, this guy's oh, got kids. Man. I mean, like, I never <laughs> saw this guy. Yeah. Ever. Are you kidding me, bro? I listen, his his girl, she's awesome. Christina, his girl, she's amazing. She's she's a she's a really really cool girl, and and I love her to death. But, dude, I remember he was playing in Switzerland, and I was trying to get in contact with him about doing the podcast. Right when the season ended, I go, I think that was the year of the bubble playoff, maybe or what. It doesn't matter. But I'm playing I'm playing fold tag with him, being like, dude, are you interested in doing this podcast with me? I got Colley on board. So I'm thinking this is what we're going to talk about. And he calls me and I finally get him on the phone. I'm like, fella, what's going on? This and, that. and I said, uh, we talk about the pod. He's like, yeah, that's not why I'm calling. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, Christine is pregnant. I'm like, fuck off. What do you mean she's pregnant? He's like, yeah, she's pregnant. So yeah, I was shocked, strict. I thought like, you know, I still chirp him. I'm like, fella, you left five or six good years on the table, bro. You know, you left five or six good years on the he table. But, yeah, he's, he's, got, he's got some Botox yeah. going on, that guy. He looks young yeah, as well. <laughs> 
He's got the he's, he's got a chamber. Yeah, listen, this guy he 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 stays young for sure. He, he's got all that you know the cool tub and the chamber and the the skincare products. Oh. But yeah, he's a great he's a great father. Uh, but yeah, Strix, I look at him sometimes and I'm like, dude, what the hell happened? But uh, <laughs> I was I was shocked. I was shocked. That's amazing. I need some of that facial shit. I'm serious, man. Yeah, Jenny, I wanted to tell you a story though. My, my, one of my really good buddies out here, him and his wife, uh, he married a Canadian girl. She's a sweetheart, Rebecca. They, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't get pregnant and they did all the, what's it called when you go in, in vitro? They, yeah. In vitro. Yeah. They did all that yeah. shit. It cost them tons of money. And then boom, dude, all of a sudden, you know, they, they stopped doing that and, and, uh, they had their son Leo and now they got another kid on the way. So, yeah, um, I get you, you know, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you never know. You it's never out know. there. It's all good. Like, I'm not, we're not like, ah, we need to get, it's just, if it happens, it happens. We're, yeah. We're, 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 dude, again, we're. Country club living, fucking. Cam princess. needs advice on how to have it. He's got, he's got I'm to beating learn. Beating that up, Andy. You don't think I'm beating he's that got, up? He's got to learn a couple. But of I'm things. wasted all the time, so maybe <laughs> maybe in a drunk that it just it doesn't work. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So yeah. it's all good. Jenny, I, I saw you on your one social media with you and your girl. Like you seem like you were at like a, a house in the forest or something last summer. Was that something that might have been accurate or something? Oh well, yeah, man. I we we went probably like rented out a cabin and the woods. Yeah, 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 hell yeah. I'm romantic as fuck, just so you know. Like I yeah, am. no, I figured that. I figured that about you. I always I always knew you had a sense of sight deep down under all that, you know, <laughs> formative formative fights and taking your shirt off and yelling at people. I'm like, this guy's well, a softy deep I, uh, down. I know it. I swim with my shirt on now, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a loser. I'm a loser. Yeah. Man, hey, you're awesome, man. Yeah. We appreciate you coming on, dude. Thanks, Seriously. Ob. Man, appreciate you're a fucking it. Man. Yeah, I know. I I love you, boys. You guys are doing great things. We got to get you guys on missing curfew too. Let, let's hook that up for sure. But anytime, I love it. Uh, Jenny, Jenny, you're a legend, but I've always respected the way you play. The guy you are. Uh, so, buddy, this is an honor coming on with you, boys, and keep it up. I got. You, you know too, what? Buddy. I think I'm. I think I'm going to come to the Lou this summer. I got to come to this fucking place. Everybody loves it. Nobody wants to leave there. So I'm gonna come. I'm. I want to come and see Maddie Kachuk. So I think I'm gonna come for a weekend and tee it up and maybe go to a Cardinals game. So I'll let you know, boys. Let me Do know. It. Hey, and Shen, let me yeah. know. And and Braden Shen staying here the whole summer too, man. You'll you'll know a lot of people here in the summertime we'll party. too. So. We'll yeah. party. You know what? And I I want to fucking try to take some money off Chris Pronger too with those deep deep pockets. Oh that he has. my no, god! He ain't giving you money, you talk, dude. Oh, I'm surprised. You, you talking like about Michael Jordan? Listen. With that shit. Pronger and I went to breakfast. He made me pay. Okay, that's all Did you gotta really, know. Oh yeah, you know he owns you. That's <laughs> he runs your show. He is cheap. So we cheap. Love him, though. I, I gotta go to Obi's Clark's or whatever too. I gotta get yeah. a hat. And I gotta get drunk at Obi's Clark's. Yeah. I've heard a lot about Let's do it. We'll get fucking Let's loaded, it. dude. It's all good, man. We'll take care of you. Right. You let me know. Hey, thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate Boys, it. Boys, I appreciate it. Anytime, Falls. Okay. See you, homeboy. See, see you, boys. See you, buddy. Bye. The Chemistry Podcast is brought to you by Bellman. And Bellman.com, B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Get out there to Detroit, Missouri. Check it out on one side. You got the Buick, the GMC. Options for everybody. Then right across the street, you got the Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Again, find something that works for you. And get yourself a new set of wheels in time for the summer. Yeah. That was OB, baby. Shane O'Brien on the Cam and Strick Podcast. What stood out from you uh, from Shane Cam? I want to party with him. We're going to if he comes to St. Louis. I do want to With our boy, Matty Kachuk. With all those guys. I want to go down. I, what stood out to me is I want to go to California and hang out with that group of dudes. I think they're fun, man. Mm -hmm. Even like the pen dog and those guys, Dustin Penn. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know if I can He's see these He's hilarious. Too, man. Those you guys get funny? down with it. He talked about um, Doug Gilmore. Like, he was like, you know, a huge fan of Doug Gilmore. Yeah. Like, there's a whole era of people in St. Louis who grew up diehard fans of Doug Gilmore, yeah, too, I man. Was one of them. He was a stud here Fuck, in St. Yeah. Louis, dude. He was a little bit before my time. Yeah, to yeah. get into it, but like, but I definitely knew he was, you know. And I, I used to run into him at the at the local rink when I was like skating. Like I used to go to a public session every Friday night, Cam, when I was in grade school. Yeah, it worked out for you, <laughs> Doug or Dougie Gilmore. Are you chirping the skating? No, I'm chirping you. Um, Doug Gilmore was good friends with Rick Wilson, who we love. Yes, he was. Rest in peace. Very good Ricky friends. Ricky Wilson, who played for the Blues. Very close friends. Second pick overall in 1984. Mm -hmm. He was our trainer, my trainer, and then Andy came in to bird watch. Because, Dude, uh, he used to. We, we'd, have, we'd have a trainer. Rick would train off. He also. loved me, too. Patty He's and, the best. And, and Brennan Bullig and all these guys. And, and then Andy would show up once in a while and just talk to us the whole time <laughs> while we're working out. Very weird. Remember when I hurt my back when very, I uh, very, oh, picked God. up those 50-pound dumbbells? And you just like. You're like, you're like, lay down, lay down. He's like walking on me. I'm like, what are you doing? I have a herniated disc. Ass. 
Don't fucking work out when you don't know what the fuck Bergeron you're doing. Bergeron had a herniated disc. You might disc. as well just come in and talk to us. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. You might as well just come in and talk to us. You're not working out. You might. As well, I know what you want to do. You want to come hang with the boys. You might as well just come just talk to us. Come talk to us. I did. Yeah, I know. I'd you work out paid, too. You paid Rick to come talk to us. That's what you did. Never charged him. You, he never Oh, cha- I love him. The I, just, I miss him so goddamn much. He was such good friends with Dougie Gilmore. I just... I miss Rick so much. I really do. It's my boy. It's my boy. God damn. But uh, Shane O'Brien, man, he's fucking cool, dude. He doesn't give a fuck. He speaks the way he wants. He, he says what he wants. He's confident in what he wants to do. He knows his past. He knows he fucked up here and there. Like, he just knows. I love that. He's honest with himself. Mm-hmm. He doesn't act like he's a professional. He doesn't act like he's the smartest guy in the room. He just gives an opinion, and he does his shit, and I love it. Were you a good roommate? Oh, God. No. A roommate? Yeah. Were you coming in late, TV on, turn, um, turning lights on? No, I would not turn lights on. I told you what I would do. When I walked in late, when David Perron was my roommate and got young guys, where they didn't want to get down with it when I'm late, late guy, I'd come in, I'd squeak the door open, like, yoink. I'd go right into the bathroom, shut the door, turn the light on, take off all my stuff, turn the light back off, lay it down, jump in bed. No lights, no anything. Easy peasy, mm-hmm. snuggle in the bed and get the fuck to bed. Sleeping in thirty Don't seconds. Don't wake your fucking roommate up because you're partying. Don't do it. Yoink, yoink. Don't do it. Somebody See, now sent Andy's going to start doing that. Andy's going to start doing that on his radio show. Andy's going to start doing that on different like little fucking interviews he does with TSN and shit. He's going to start saying yoink. He's going to just take all my stuff. Hey, quit so doing somebody that. Somebody sent me a video the other day. Did you see that? He, like, uh, goes out into the wilderness, and he, like, collects, like, snakes and different things, and he says yoink all the time. Really? I feel like he's, and he's... He stole it from I me? I feel like he stole it from us. I got it from an episode on The Simpsons back in, like, 1994 with a guy, I guess, a character. He comes in, and... He like steals a diamond. Did he goes, you see that? Yoink. What was that? A TikTok. He kept saying that too. Yoink. Oh, I got to trademark that. He's a media there. guy, so I feel like maybe he there's a lot stole of, it. There's a lot of things. He I didn't say it is good, though. Yoink. You going to do that? No. He's like, yoink. He's like, yoink. Oh, that's kind of cool. Stole that from me, man. I'm trademarking that motherfucker. I ain't playing. I only have so many things in my vocabulary. Oh, well, we know that. Well, I. They're working. Toe dragon cougars. Who said that? Toe dragon them fucking cougars. Dicks. Hey, who's uh, gonna win between Vegas and Edmonton? I don't know. Hey, Edmonton, if you don't make it to the Stanley Cup final now, I, I've got. I, I I just I'm done with you. Pa- the, the 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 path is paved. There's no Colorado. And I know Vegas is. They're good, but they ain't, they ain't that good. You got Connor McDavid. Oh, here's what we didn't Leon Drysaitel. At home, you got to the conference final last year. You don't get to the Stanley Cup final this year. I mean, you have zero, zero excuse. I get that. How about Blake Wheeler? Oh, my pussy. God. Listen, I, I heard ho- he's a pussy. Well, listen, when Rick Bonus got there. I like him, by the way. Rick Bonus. First thing he did was like, all right, we're changing this shit no up. shit. That core group of players, have has, they, they've had the worst reputation. They've never been able to get it done. I know. They've never even, I mean, I hate to say even get over the hump because they've never even, like, gotten to the hump. Yeah. Over the hump is, like, getting from, like, the third round to the final. Yeah. Or Making winning or winning the final. Making a mark, dude. They can't even win a round. No. They're, like, awful. They've got no chemistry. They've got, um, you know, personality issues. And you know what? It's a game, uh, was it a game seven, game six, whatever? The game five, actually, it was. It was a game five. Must win situation. And the coach has said he's disgusted and disappointed. Well, yeah, he absolutely is. It's his first year with you guys. And I guarantee you, he's, he's been coaching for 100 years. Yeah, he has. He doesn't need to be coaching you guys. All right? But he's still coaching. They brought him in, and he's probably telling that general manager, like he told him from day one, and he's telling that owner, this guy's got to go, that guy's got to go, this guy's got to yeah, go. Man. Because we're not winning with this guy. Can't win with him. So, like, he comes out, and he's pissed, and they lose, and they didn't have any pushback. And he's like, fuck, what the fuck? No pushback. No fucking push. I like Rick Bones. Just no like, pushback. I, and he's like, our leader, our fucking leaders got outplayed. 
Yeah. They got out. And they had no pushback. No pushback since goddamn February. And then Blake Wheeler's like, hmm, I didn't like what the coach said. Okay. I'm Blake Wheeler. I didn't like what the coach said. He could have said it like in the closed doors and stuff because it's just like, I didn't understand that, man. And need to be like, what? You just said the same fucking thing. Why don't you go talk to him behind closed doors and say, I didn't fucking like that. Fucking called you out. You haven't done shit since February. You haven't done shit. And you got your C fucking stripped. And now you're countering your coach. You fucking laid an egg. Baby. I'm so dumb with Winnipeg. The one player I like on Winnipeg. Listen, I mean, sure. I like like, people up there. Sure. All of that. We like the people. Those are my Andy, people. Yes. We like the shit kickers in the goddamn great Winnipeg. White okay. North. Yes. Let's not fuck around with that. No, they they're, they got they're, shit kickers. They're dealing up there, with dude. shit. They're dealing with the they're elements. They're pissed too. Yeah, and they're they pissed are. at fucking Wheeler. P- Shut the, the fuck up and take some onus on yourself. You're gonna blame the goddamn coach. You oh didn't do God. shit. You fuck haven't. Out of here. You've never done shit. You haven't done shit. Regular season team. Matthew Chuck owned you. Oh yeah, you fuck did. yeah. In the bubble, you got owned. In the bubble. Good God. He you, had think, to, you think people are like, I, I'm scared Matthew, to go get Blake Wheeler. Matthew had to ask you to fight after Matthew took Shifley out of the playoff series. And then he had to ask Wheeler to fight. <laughs> out of here. These guys, man. And you know what? Paul Maurice would tell you the same thing. He's probably watching this from afar being like, that's yep, why I had to get exactly. the hell out You're of there. damn right. Dude. And that's why I said, yep. I'm done with this Fucking group. Fucking done, dude. One other thing before we get into lives. Um, our boy we just interviewed, um, Andrew Burnett. Mm-hmm. God, did you see his fucking golf video? Go- yeah, he's in a goddamn golf cart. Oh my god, let him go home. He's in a golf cart, right by his house. I know. I felt bad for him. On that. I felt bad for him too. That. Like they, he's like what? And they put that video out, like 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 he's like shit faced, and like creating a, some type of public disturbance or like, you know, a da- going, a danger to society. He's, going he's seven with miles his an wife. Hour. He's going seven miles. Going an hour. four miles an hour. What are you doing? They got and look. I don't want to. We don't want to like chirp the cop. Like, don't don't get me wrong. I just look at that. I'm like, oh man, that's sucks. yeah. But some cops are just dicks. They man. are, dude. Just like there's some bad military guys. There's he's some like, bad don't guys. fight me. I know. Like he's just trying like, to. Why are you getting all aggressive, dude? Right, right there. He's like, I live right there. Can I have my wife like just drive the damn golf I cart know. home? These cops waiting outside. See the real the story is, they had told he had come out of the bar. I guess they were telling him he couldn't park his golf cart in a certain spot. Yeah. So he moved the golf cart. Then he goes back into the bar. It's like the cop waited for him yeah, to I come know. out to follow him in the golf cart. I'm going to get you. I know. I, I, and, 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 you know, yeah, he said, you know, I used to coach the Panthers, but he didn't say it in a no, way of like, wasn't, don't you know who I am? No, just like a lot like of people being do. being like, yeah. dude, and like, he couldn't have picked the worst market to be the head coach because yeah, no they don't get, they don't even yeah. fucking know who the Panthers are there. Are they going to sell out, by the way? Because the Panthers are making a rule where no one from Canada can yeah, buy I tickets. We, I got my fans. But fucking. all the Canadians, they have they have addresses in Florida because they all go there. They're snowbirds, well, if, No, dude. if you have your credit card address, you can go in. I know. And they, a lot of Canadians live there. I had a guy text me just before the show, and he's like, dude, my fucking grandfather fought in World War fucking two, And I can't, I can't see the Panthers play. Why? Because he's from Toronto. He lives in Toronto now. But is he a, is he a Leafs fan? Yeah, but he's like, I want to watch the Leafs. He's like, I can't go into that building. No, you can't. All right. Sorry. Listen, other organizi- or other organizations have done this before. Nashville. I, I feel like the Blues may have done it. The Blues, I think. Like did. if you're from Chicago or something. Yeah, you I think the Blues did it too. And like, you know what? They got to protect their house, man. It's the playoffs. It's the second round. The Florida Panthers can't have a building full of Maple Leaf no, fans. I agree with that. Okay, so if I'm Maddie Kachuk. And, you know, Brandon Montour, who all of a sudden has turned into, like, you know, the greatest defenseman that we've ever seen in the history of the game. I build his ass a statue. Oh, shit. Like, this guy's fucking unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, I just hope they pack it in, man. So, you know, we don't need Maple Leaf fans down there. I I, I know you want to go to the game. It's probably cheaper than to get a ticket (laughs) in Toronto. (laughs) And a lot of Canadians live in Miami. Um because, you know, they're snowbirds and they, they leave to get out of the cold elements and stuff like that. Do. And they've got a place in Florida. I get all that. But you know what? They're trying to protect their own house so they can have a home ice advantage. And there's nothing wrong with that. I know. I know. It's all good. I, I, now I, that I break it down for you, you're okay with it. No, I just, when, when a guy throws a WW2 out with his grandma, I'm like, oh. Mm-hmm. So he's pissed about it, man. It's all good. You could be pissed about it. I, I kind of get what they're saying, but uh, you better pack that fucking Blake place. Lake Wheeler. I'll tell you who I'd take from Winnipeg. I mean, Connor. I guess. 
Yeah. I want to see him, like, actually, like, I mean, he's a hell of a goaltender, but. Well, no, 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 no. Kyle Connor. Oh, they make Connor Hellebuck. No. Kyle Connor, I take him in a heartbeat. Yeah, of course. Number he's 81. Good. Ty wears Fuck 81. Is he good. He's really he good. He flies around, busts flies his ass. Around. I like him a lot. If they didn't have Ehlers, I might take him I too. I like Ehlers too. I'd take that Lowry. Yes. I like Lowry. Adam Lowry. Damn right. Get him on. All right. Get him on. I want um, Felino too. Nick or Marcus? Marcus. Big Marcus. That's my boy. Nick's cool. But I like Big Marcus. Mm-hmm. He fucking goes, dude. I like that so, Minnesota team, man. That sucked. Josh Morrissey, you know, he didn't play in game five. No, he was banged up pretty good, yeah. So maybe he could have, yeah, he, he could have maybe made a difference if he was available in the series for the whole series. Yeah. Um, but uh, listen, th- there's no doubt when uh, Rick Bonus, they call him Bones Cam, in case you didn't know. Okay. He's pointing the finger at, at uh, Blake Wheeler, dude. Shit. You know that? Yeah, I do. That's why it's like, no. No pushback no from push you. Back. You didn't have any pushback. Go fuck yourself. Now you got to do Why that. did he say that why, about me? I mean, God, why did he say that? How dare That's he That's for closed that? doors. That's a closed door stuff. Shut up. But you know what? I give uh, Bones credit because he's like, you know what? I've seen this team from a distance all these years. We all knew what we were going up against when we played Winnipeg. We all knew they didn't have any pushback. Fucking smack and now he's on the bench and he's like, get these guys. That I ain't coaching oh, shit. them. I want winners. Fuck out of here. No doubt, man. I want winners. So we appreciate Shane O'Brien for joining yeah, us, dude, man. He was, he was awesome. cool as shit. Great guy. Great dude. They do a, they have a damn thing, good thing going, him and Scotty. Well, Scotty's hanging out with all the fucking... The big boys, yeah. I, I like know. hanging out with regular people. Oh, I like hanging I out. I like to be like the center of attention. I man. like hanging out with the big boys. <laughs> I know you do, Andy. Andy likes doing that stuff. I like hanging out with my buddies. I like hanging out with people that are cool. Mm-hmm. I don't like getting one-upped by every motherfucker, you know? And he likes to fuck. Hey, I just got a new car. Oh, so did I. Yeah, yeah. I got the nicer one. It's Cam, how's, how's everything going with you? Well, do good. Well, how you hear about me? I got a million dollars. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. They're, they asked me the question. Uh, Hair club. Hair club, baby. Hairclub.com. Get that pill, man. Solutions for everybody. Go into a local establishment nearest you, man. Find the one, find the one closest just to you. Walk just walk the, on in there. Walk in the goddamn thing. That's the hardest thing to just do. Just do it. Who gives a fuck? Mm. Just get it done. It Go in there and talk to him. Doesn't who gives even a matter. Fuck. Doesn't even matter. No one's going to judge you. Who gives a shit? Get your goddamn hair fixed, man. I'm mm-hmm. telling you guys. Who gives a fuck? Mm-hmm. Fucking call them up and have an appointment. Walk in there. They're the nicest people in and the And they'll talk to you about freaking Blake Wheeler, too. And they'll, they'll tell you. <laughs> they're they know. hockey fans. They know. Time, yeah. They're huge hockey fans. And they're Panther fans too, man. Especially the ones down in Florida. So we're we're, we're pulling for the Panthers. There's no doubt. Um, hair Club and HairClub.com again. HairClub.com slash Cam and Strict Baby. All right, first form or firstform.com. I'm gonna make my snack when I get home, Cam. I'm gonna put that bar. I'm gonna heat it up for about 25 seconds. Yeah. And I put a banana on top. I like that. Oh, dude, yeah, it's good. so good. Like I've got my kids eating it too. Good, man. Um, I got a lot of stuff I got to do when I get home. I'm gonna do that. I have to actually sharpen skates too. You know, when you have a Sparks Cam. Yeah. Other parents, they say, hey, do you mind if I give you my kids' skates? Oh, then you'll sucks. bring them to... No, I don't mind it. Fuck that. Because they don't want to go to Seth, dude. So I, I get that. They don't want like, Hey, go buy your own, you cheap I fuck. know, I know. They don't want to no, go to go Seth. Go get your own. Yeah, but like you're not doing that. Use our promo code. So now that you're sharpening skates all fucking day, I need, I need you. No, no, no. Wait, now I'm pissed. <laughs> Who's doing this? A buddy of mine. Well, tell them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> okay, I can't, you're, you're, I can't you're, no, do no, that. No, no, I, I need your time. I'm sure I, I'm, I need your time. I got my own like hockey I don't give a shit going on today. That he can't go to a Seth. Buy your own. So now you have Andy sharpening skates. I need Andy here. And now he's sharpening your kids' skates. Get out of here with that, dude. First, Buy your own. Firstform.com though. Um, download the app and do it today. If you have any questions, their one eight hundred number. I'll even give the number out to you right now because right, right, write this down. They'll answer anything for you. These people are so nice. Yeah. They'll do it on the app, too, so you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that right? Yeah. You can ask questions. They show you how to work out. It's awesome. Let's see here. 800-409-9732, Cam. 800-409-9732. Somebody answers in the first ring. You know that? Yeah. It doesn't, like, ring for, like, 25 minutes. I know. First ring. 800-409-9732, baby. Firstform.com. Download, uh, download that app and do it today. Again, sparks and sparks.com. Use that promo code. 
Cam and Strick, it's going to save you more money than you'll save on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. It truly is that big of a deal. Do not have Seth sharpen your skates and put the wrong roller hockey wheels on your... Whatever you're doing, he's going to make a mistake because he's not focused. <laughs> not focused. <laughs> he's not sober. Fucking... Look... <laughs> it's creeping out your daughter. You ever looked in his... Uh, Looking at his computer history? Computer history. Oh, there's some weird thing, dude. <laughs> right, like, let's might, like, let's like, not talk know, about it. You know. Let's not even talk about it. Like, he might lock his ass up. Bellman and Bellman.com, baby. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. They got the Buick GMC on one side of the street. Cam's looking at that uh, Buick Enclave. It's frosted white with tan leather. Yeah. Captain seats on the inside. Perfect for all seasons. Nothing wrong with that at all, Cam. Buicks are beautiful. They got a lot of selection there. The GMC, obviously. Get that Yukon. Awesome, awesome customer service you won't find anywhere else. On the other side of the street, Cam, it's Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. They've got something literally for everybody. They do, baby. Bellman and Bellman.com located where? Trike. Saturdale. Dale, what up, homie? Kenny? Kenny. Danny boy? Danny, what up? Danny boy. We got to take Danny golfing, dude. I like how Andy invites himself to go golf. Like, are you going to take him to your place? I'll take Danny. I'll take all those guys in my place. Settle I like down. how you say we have to take him golfing. No, I do. Settle down. I do. Where are you, you going to take him golfing? If you're a backyard? member, if you're a member there, where I'm a I'm where, a member. Where are you taking him? Your backyard? If you're a member, I'm a member. And he's like, "Come over, we'll golf." I go, oh, "Where are we going?" Well, my backyard. Okay. Oh, cool. If you're a member, I'm a member. Yeah, you're right. That's how it works. Remember that. I will. All right, well, say hello. Say bye to the people and everything. Just love all y'all out there. I love all you guys. Let us know what's up. Follow us all on social media. I got Instagram, Facebook, fucking Twitter. Twitter. Message us. Whatever you guys want to do. We love you guys so much, man. Mm-hmm. Honestly, girls, guys, all y'all out there. Everybody. Pardon my cussing. Oh, my God. Sorry if I offend something of something. Not that oh, I do. I, I hope more, you didn't do I that. I don't think I did. I love all you guys, honestly. Always message me, man, and mm-hmm. be honest. Yeah. We'll take it. We, we love it. Yeah. And but, send me messages, too, Yeah, actually. send Andy Send them to me. Talk to Andy, too. Okay. Because like, Cam's late getting to him and everything. So uh, if, you, if you need immediate response, if you want to be part of our team, honestly. Yeah. Absolutely. Reach out to us. Let no us doubt. know. We'd no love doubt. to partner with you as well for the summer. Remember, we go 12 months a year here on the Cam and Strick podcast. Yeah, baby. All right. Hope everyone has a great day. Again, camandstrick.com. Like Cam said, follow us on all the social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we thank Shane O'Brien for joining us on this edition. And uh, enjoy uh, round two. Yeah, baby. Big well, time. And games. listen, we'll have lots of stuff for you. Lots of coverage yeah. and videos and all yeah, that we'll type of stuff on social too. media. Yep. So follow us on Instagram for all of that. See so. dudes. Be cool, man. Later, y'all.